Section 1. If there an angel over him, an interpreter, Rabbi Yehuda tells us that people who study Torah and observe its commandments have an advocate stand up for them before God rather than an accuser, for just as there are accusers in the world below, there are adversaries above as well. Rabbi Shia wonders why if someone keeps the commandments it is necessary to have an angel intercede for him. Rabbi Yehuda answers that it is true that God sees everything, but he gave permission to the other side to accuse people in this world. One and Hashem said to Moses, Go into Pharaoh, for I have hardened his heart. Shemot 101. Rabbi Yehuda opened the discussion, saying, Happy is the people that know the joyful note they shall walk Hashem in the light of your countenance. Tehillim 8916. How much should people walk in the ways of the Holy One? Blessed be he and observe the commandments of the Torah in order to merit the world to come and that they may be delivered from all accusers above and Below for as there are accusers in the world below so there are adversaries above whose functions is to accuse people to those who observe the commandments of the Torah and walk the right path in fear of their master good advocates are situated above them as is written if there be an angel over him an interpreter one among a thousand and he is gracious to him and says deliver him from going down to the pit I have found a ransom Eo 3323 therefore fortunate is he who observes the commandments of the Torah three Rabbi Shia said to him if so why is it necessary to have an angel to intercede for the person seeing it is written for Hashem will be your confidence and will keep your foot from being caught Mishlei 326 Hashem will guard you from all evil Tehillim 1217 for the Holy One blessed be he sees everything that a man does in the world both good and evil and so he says can any hide himself in secret places that I shall not see him says Hashem Yirmeyah 2324 if this is so why do we need an angel to intercede or accuse for Rabbi Yehuda said certainly it is so that the Holy One blessed be he sees everything but it is written and touch his bone and his flesh of 25 and although you did move me against him to destroy him without cause of it 3 this shows that permission was granted to the other side to accuse in worldly matters and they should be given into his hands all these things are to stay concealed before the Holy One blessed be he and you have no right to follow them to investigate them because they are the statutes of the Holy One blessed be he humans are not permitted to be particular about them except for those truly righteous who know the secrets of the Torah and go in the way of wisdom to know these hidden things in the Torah this is the meaning of happy is the people that know the joyful note true Hotel 8916 that is they know the ways of blessed Hashem and that he brings evil and good through messengers although he can do it himself so in the passage go into Pharaoh the Holy One blessed be he wanted Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go even though he was able to take them out against his will section 2 now there was a day and the adversary came also among them Rabbi Lazar begins by talking about Rosh Hashanah judgment day he says there are messengers who are appointed by God to watch over the actions of people and at judgment day these messengers accuse those whose actions were improper when Israel sinned they weaken God but when they perform good actions they give might and power to him Rabbi Lazar speaks about the adversary also came among them and recounts the conversation between God and Satan wherein God distracts Satan from his accusation of Israel by asking him if he has considered his servant job Satan always requests justice from God we read that job was judged as he had judged Israel since he had been one of Pharaoh's advisors the Satan was given permission to afflict Job's bones and flesh but not to kill him we are told that God does not want to destroy the whole world on the word of the accuser since the accuser's desire is always to destroy the discussion turns to the end of all flesh which is the Satan and the end of days that is in holiness on Rosh Hashanah those who come before God with repentance deserve to be written on the side of life those who come with evil actions are written on the other side which is death we are told then of the balance where the world is half life and half death and the actions of one righteous man or one wicked person can tip the balance so that all the world is written to life or death a person should not be set apart by himself because he can be noticed and accused from above Job who was set apart and who was tested severely did not even then join the other side he should however have given a part of his sacrifice to the other side because then the other side would have removed himself from the temple the conclusion of the section is that God judged Job giving him first good and then bad and then good again thus it is proper for a person to know good and bad and to return himself to good five Rabbi Lazar opened the discussion saying now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Hashem and the adversary came also among them Eo 16 now there was a day refers to Rosh Hashanah the Jewish New Year the day that the Holy One blessed be he rises to judge the world similarly and it happened one day that he came there to Melashim 411 that day was the holy day of Rosh Hashanah 6 and the sons of Elohim came these are the appointed ministers whose mission in the world is to observe the actions of people to present themselves before Hashem as is written and all the hosts of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left I Melashim 22 19 but in the passage to present themselves before Hashem I have found it Love of the Holy One, blessed be he toward Israel, these messengers who are appointed to observe the actions of people wander around in the world and take all these actions and on the day that judgment rises to judge the world they became accusers so they are denouncing against people come and behold of all the nations in the world the ministers stand to watch over the activities of Israel only because they are the children of the Holy One, blessed be he seven when the actions of the children of Israel were found to be improper the appointed messengers stand against these actions of Israel and stand by Hashem for when the children of Israel perform actions that are not good they weaken so to speak the strength of the Holy One, blessed be he when they perform good actions they give might and power to the Holy One, blessed be he of this it is written give strength to Elohim Tehillim 6835 how I ask strength given by good actions therefore all the appointed ministers gathered by live upon Hashem on that day upon Hashem most certainly for they gathered to bring accusations upon Israel which amounts to having gathered against Hashem to weaken his strength so to speak eight the adversary also came among them the word also adds to the children of Elohim because they all came to accuse Israel and the adversary also joined them because he was the greatest slanderer of them all as soon as the Holy One blessed be he saw that they all came to accuse immediately and Hashem said to the adversary from where do you come he of seventeen since he was the greatest of them all he asked did not the Holy One blessed be he know where he came from so that he had to ask him he answers rather only to allow the matter to the wishes of the Satan meaning that with these words he gave him an opening to accuse as he wishes nine and Hashem said to the adversary then the adversary answered Hashem and said from going to and fro in the earth he of seventeen from here I learned that the settling of the earth is given over to other side namely the seventy nations except for the land of Israel exclusively which is secured in holiness for the children of Israel therefore since he said from going to and fro in the earth the word earth is unspecified and means the land of Israel the holy one blessed be he saw that the Satan wanted to slander Israel and not Job or others who were considered of the nations who inhabit the other lands immediately Hashem said to the adversary have you considered my servant Job that there is none like him on earth of it 8 he saw that now was the opportune time to give the Satan a portion with which to be occupied so he would be kept afar from Israel they explained this to be similar to a shepherd who wanted to get his sheep across a river when a wolf came to attack the sheep what does an experienced shepherd do he takes a big goat and gives it to the wolf saying let him fight with the goat until I let my sheep cross over the River and then I will return and take this one also the Holy One blessed be he did likewise he gave job to the adversary to be occupied with so he would not accuse Israel immediately the Satan busied himself with him and did not accuse Israel eleven and the adversary answered Hashem and said is it for not that job fears Elohim of nine it is not surprising that a servant whose master does his desire fears him remove your supervision from him and you will see if he still fears you or not twelve come and behold during the time of durance when a portion is given to the side with which to occupy itself it goes away by following it entirely similarly a he goat is sacrificed on the first day of the month and on Yom Kippur day of atonement this is the secret meaning of giving a portion to the other side which is given to it in order that it shall be occupied and so leave Israel in their kingdom the time had arrived to take this portion from the whole seed of Abraham for the other side as was written behold Milka she also has born his firstborn Bershi 2221 job was in the land of Uts meaning that he was of the family of Abraham 13 come and behold when the
Request by means of judgment 14 after Isaac was saved and his offering exchanged the Holy One blessed be he prepared this for the accuser namely Job for his portion as it is written behold Milkishi also has born Uts his firstborn namely Job who dwelt in the land of Uts this was said immediately after the binding of Isaac here at the birth of Uts the Satan arrived to take for his portion from all the seed of Abraham so he would not approach to damage another side namely the children of Israel 15 everything is according to justice just as Job judged so was he judged Job was one of Pharaoh's advisors when Pharaoh rose against Israel and wanted to kill them Job said to him no just take their money and rule over their bodies with hard labor but do not kill them the Holy One blessed be he said to him I swear on your life that you shall be judged with the same punishment that you pronounced against the children of Israel it is written but put forth your hand now and Touch his bone and his flesh. He of twenty-five. He himself was judged as he judged Israel, even though he feared the presence of the Holy One. Blessed be he in all other things as is written about him. And he feared Elohim. He was not spared from judgment. Sixteen. Come and behold, it is written. Only spare his soul. If it six, he was given permission to rule over his flesh. For this is the secret of the verse. The end of all flesh has come before me. Bear sheet six hundred and thirteen. And it was explained has come before me. Assuredly means that the end of all flesh, which is the Satan the destroyer, has come before me to receive permission. This is what is called the end of all flesh, and not called the end of all spirit. They explain that it is the end that comes from the side of darkness, namely from the aspect of the judgments of the male as written. He put an end to darkness and searches out all perfection. Eo two hundred and eighty-three. All perfection resembles all flesh. For there is another end, which is the end of days. Also write Daniel 1213 which is in holiness this one here is a different end from the left side which is dark therefore he received permission to afflict his bone and flesh 17 although you did move me against him to destroy him without cause of 23 he asks if so then was he punished unlawfully only because of the talk of the accuser who provoked him and turned him he answers rather everything was only done according to justice and Ella you did say to him for the work of a man shall he pay back to him and according to his ways will he cause to befall every man Eo 3411 as we said as he decreed against the children of Israel by Pharaoh such was decreed against him 18 yet he said although you did move me against him to destroy him without cause the explanation is that it is not written although you did move me to destroy him rather it says although you did move me against or in him which means in his mind for he thinks that you did move me as Job said and shine. Upon the counsel of the wicked Eo 103 similarly nevertheless they did flatter him with their mouths and they lied to him with their tongues. Tehillim 7836 which is also difficult for is it possible to entice the Holy One blessed be he it is not written they did flatter him with and they lied to him but rather they did flatter him with their mouths only by their mouths it was so that he was enticed meaning that they thought so but in truth it was not so. 19 Rabbi Abba said this is all. Well but so have I learned we learned he goes up and accuses he asks can he accuse before the Holy One blessed be he who knows everything he answers yes because he is an old foolish king is written better is a poor and wise child than an old and foolish king. Kahila 413 since he is a king over people he can therefore accuse man what is the reason because he is trusted over the actions of people since he reigns over them he is trusted over their actions 20 come and behold this is so. Only with judging an individual but concerning the judging of the world it is written and Hashem descended to see Bereshit 115 I will go down and see Bereshit 1821 he was not trusted rather it was in the hands of the Holy One blessed be he alone because he did not want to destroy the world according to the word of the accuser whose desire is always to destroy how do we know that because it is written he put an end to darkness and searches out all perfection Eo 283 meaning that he searches to destroy everything and this is the meaning of the end of all flesh has come before me Bereshit 613 the adversary who is called the end of all flesh has certainly come to destroy 21 come and behold now there was a day when the sons of Elohim came to present themselves before Hashem Eo 16 as explained that it was on Rosh Hashanah for on that day two sides are before the world all those who come before the Holy One blessed be he with repentance and good deeds merit to be Written on that side which is life which brings out the effects of life and whoever is from its side is recorded for life all those who come with evil actions are written on the other side which is death it is called death and in it death dwells to kill people 22 on that day these two sides exist life and death some are written to the side of life and some are written to the side of death sometimes the world is in the middle meaning half deserving and half guilty if there is one righteous man to tip the balance in the world they all stand and are written to life but if one wicked person ever balances the world they are all written to death 23 the time that the world was in the middle meaning half guilty and half meritorious the prosecutor wanted to accuse and to tip the world to the scale of guilt immediately it is written have you considered my servant job that there is none like him on earth Eo 15 as soon as he was set apart the accuser immediately attacked him therefore we learn that a person should not remove himself from the community so that he will not be noted apart and he will not be accused from above 24 it is written by the Shunammit woman and she said I dwell among my own people 2 Melashim 413 meaning she does not want to be set apart from the public I dwell among my people to this day and I will be known among my people as one whole above since Job was known above and was distinguished the accuser immediately attacked him and said does Job fear Elohim for naught the reason he fears you and has fortified himself with good deeds is not for naught have you not made a hedge about him of 110 however take away from him all this good that you did for him and you will immediately see if he will curse you to your face of it 11 he will leave you and cleave to the other side for he eats at your table at present remove your table from him and we will see whose he is and to which side he will cleave 25 immediately and Hashem said to the adversary, Behold, all that he has is in your power of it twelve to show that the fear of Job for the Holy One blessed be he was to guard his wealth from here. We learn that all those who fear the Holy One blessed be he because of their wealth or their children do not have proper fear. Therefore the accuser accused and said, Is it for not that Job fears Elohim? Behold, you have made a hedge about him, you have blessed the works of his hands, therefore he fears you. Then he was granted permission to persecute him and show that Job did not serve Hashem out of love. Twenty six as soon as he was tested, he left the path and did not retain his integrity. It is written in all this Job did not sin with his lips. Eo two hundred and ten, but he did sin in his will afterwards. He sinned in everything as it is written that he said, The earth is given into the hand of wicked IYOV nine hundred and twenty four. And similarly Rabba said, Job abused in torrents. Look there twenty seven one may question why no person was tested except Job indeed it is written Hashem tries the righteous Tehillim 115 therefore Job was also tried even though he did not retain his strength as he should have he did not leave the domain of his master to join the other side 28 he asks how long was his test he answers the duration of the dominion of the other side is 12 months as we learn the punishment of the wicked in Gehenna lasts 12 months since he did not join the other side it is written so Hashem blessed the latter end of Job more than his beginning Eo 4212 29 Rabbi Shimon said Job's was not a test from the Holy One blessed be he like the test of the other righteous men because it is not written and the Elohim tested Job as in Elohim did test Abraham Bereshit 221 Abraham offered his only son to the Holy One blessed be he with his own hand but Job gave nothing and did not give anything to the Holy One blessed be he 30 he was not told about the test as Abraham was because it was revealed before him that he would not be able to withstand it properly it was instead given over to the accuser and it was done through the judgment of the Holy One blessed be he because he brought the heavy labor on the children of Israel in Egypt the Holy One blessed be he aroused this judgment by the accuser as written have you considered my servant Job 1831 he opened the discussion saying and in process of time it came to pass let at the end of days have Yamam that kind brought of the fruit of the ground bear she 43 it is written the end of Yamam and not the end of right have Yamam the end of days I asked the other side and the end of right is holiness since he rejected the end of right but came near the end of days and we explained that it is written but go your way till the end be Daniel 1213 and Daniel said to which end if to the end of right or to the end of days the Holy One blessed be he said to him to the end of right which is in holiness this is what David feared and said Hashem make me know my end and the measure of my days what it is Tehillim 
is the secret of the other side and only gave a portion to the Holy One. Blessed be he, therefore it was not accepted. 33 of Job it is written, and his sons used to go and feast, and they used to call for their three sisters to eat and drink with them. And when the days of feasting were gone about Eo 14 to 5 at the feast, the accuser was present every day, but he could not overcome him. How do we know? Because it is written, have you not made a hedge about him and about his house of it ten? But he never gave a part to the other side, because it is written, and offered burnt offerings according to the number of them all of it. Five the burnt offering rises high up and does not give a part to the other side. Had he given him a part, the adversary would not have been able to overcome him afterwards, and everything that the Satan took from him was his because he did not give the Satan a part of his offerings. 34 one may ask why the Holy One blessed be he did harm to him because he did not give a Portion to the Satan he answers had he given a part to the other side it would have cleared the way of holiness because the other side would have gone from the temple and the holy side would have ascended high up because he did not do so the holy one blessed be he demanded justice from him 35 come and behold in the same way that he separated and did not combine good and evil in that he did not give a part to the other side so as to purify holiness as mentioned earlier he judged him first giving him good and afterwards bad then he again established him in goodness this is proper for a person to know good and know evil and to return himself to good this is the secret of the faith which is the book become and behold Job was one of the servants of Pharaoh as indicated by the verse he that feared the word of Hashem among the servants of Pharaoh Shema 920 section 3 the crocodiles Rabbi Shimon speaks about behold I am against you Pharaoh king of Egypt the great crocodile that catches in the midst of his streams he explains that God brought Moses into the innermost rooms to see the secret of the great crocodile from where many levels evolved and descend as Moses was afraid God had to wage war with the crocodile himself Rabbi Shimon turns to and Elohim created the great crocodiles have tenanim and every living soul that crawls the waters swarm forth according to their kinds he says that the crocodiles are the Leviathan and his spouse. God killed the female leaving only the male otherwise the world could not have survived the streams in the scripture are the nine rivers that he lies in corresponding to the nine spirot the crocodile comes into the river Keter whose waters are serene and quiet which strengthens the river Rabbi Shimon describes the rise and flow of the rivers the emergence of the ten rivers including Keter and the nine crocodiles one in each river there is a long description of the implications of it. Correspondence between the ten crocodiles and the ten acts of creation in Beersheet the grasses beside the rivers are explained to be the light that sprouts from the sewing of the confined hidden light. Rabbi Shimon says that an Elohim said let there be luminaries in the firmaments of the heavens refers to the piercing serpent that tempted Eve since the serpent is on dry land it always triumphs when it battles the crocodile that is in the water. 36 Rabbi Shimon said now it is proper to reveal secrets that are attached above and below it is written come to Pharaoh but it should have said go to Pharaoh what is the meaning of come he answers he brought Moses into the innermost rooms to a very powerful crocodile from which many levels evolve and come down and what was it it was the secret of the great serpent. 37 Moses was afraid and approached only the rivers that were at his grave but he feared the serpent itself and did not approach because he saw that it was rooted. In high sources 38 when the Holy One blessed be he saw that Moses was afraid and that other appointed messengers above could not approach him the Holy One blessed be he said behold I am against you Pharaoh king of Egypt the great crocodile that catches in the midst of his streams Yashiskel 293 the Holy One blessed be he had to wage war with him and no other he said I am Hashem we interpret this to mean I am not a messenger they explain the secret of the wisdom of the great crocodile that catches in the midst of his streams to those scholars of jurisprudence who recognize the secret of their master 39 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying and Elohim created the great crocodiles have tenanim and every living creature that moves which the waters brought forth abundantly after their kind Beersheet 121 this passage was explained yet and Elohim created the crocodiles is a secret it is a Leviathan and his spouse tenanim is spelled without the yud because the Holy One blessed be he killed the female and brought her up for the righteous as it was explained therefore only the one great crocodile tannin remained and know that the Leviathan is a kosher fish as our sages say 40 the great crocodile is the male Leviathan that remained alive it is said about him that couches in the midst of his streams there are nine rivers that he lies in corresponding to nine spirot chakma bonded at chesed bure tifer at net sach hot and yizid and there is one river whose waters are quiet this is key to the blessings of the waters of the garden which is malchut of atzala pour into it three times a year this is the secret of the three columns right left and central of which it is said three times a year shall all your males appear to bar 1616 if they pour in twice meaning only two columns right and left the river is blessed but not as much because the central column is missing if only one pours in meaning either only the right or only the left it is not blessed by it. the nine rivers the lower nine spirot received from the river which is Keter 41 this crocodile comes into that river which is Keter of the rivers becomes strengthened by it continues to swim and enters into the sea which is Malchut of Atzala where it swallows many kinds of fish and rules these are levels in the sea that are inferior to him he swallows them and they become perfected in him he returns to that quiet river and these nine rivers continue to rise to him meaning to receive their sustenance because they receive their sustenance from the quiet river which is their Keter there are various kinds of trees and vegetation around the river it is the first river among the rivers namely Keter 42 and now he explains the system of the emergence of the ten rivers three drops emerge from the left side from one conduit that is drawn and emerges that is Yezid of Zeir and there from the three columns right left and central included in the left Column every drop spreads into three drops and they become nine drops one river is formed from each separate drop these are the nine rivers that grow strong and continue to flow and encircle all the firmaments 43 after these drops finish coming out of those that remain namely all the aspects of Keter and Chakma that are above Bada that are not drawn through the three columns there remains one drop it emerges silently and falls among the rivers and from it one river is formed this is it. River that we said flows silently namely the quiet river mentioned above 44 the stream that comes out and flows yes it in Zeir and pours out other drops of blessings from the right side that is when it bestows upon Malchut from the three columns that are included in the right column from whatever was left of these drops and did not emerge with them at the time namely those Sfirat above Bada that are not drawn with the three columns as mentioned there remains one drop from these blessings. That emerges silently and falls into that quiet river thus the quiet river also has the illumination of the right this is the best river 45 when these four rivers that emerge from the garden of Eden separate that river called Pishon falls into the quiet river and merges with it therefore the kingdom of Babylon is associated with this river for Pishon is the kingdom of Babylon because Pishon is the first stream of the four rivers and Babylon is the first of the four empires of which it is. Said you are the head of gold Daniel 238 and therefore Pishon is Babylon from this quiet river all the other rivers are sustained and filled 46 in each river one crocodile swims thus there are nine crocodiles each has a hole punctured in his head as is written you broke the heads of the sea monsters in the water Tehillim 7413 and even this great sea monster is so because they all blow air upwards and not downwards 47 it is written in the beginning Elohim created Beersheet 11 and also an Elohim created the great crocodiles Ibid 21 in both cases it is written created this teach us that for every action of the ten sayings in the works of creation there are ten rivers and one crocodile blows wind against each of them this means that one crocodile for each of the ten rivers blows wind against the act corresponding to him of the ten sayings of creation 48 therefore the world shakes once in 70 years since everything in the river shakes when this great crocodile raises his fins and shakes the whole world shudders and the earth trembles for they are all included in this great crocodile 49 and the earth was without form Ibid 2 Rabbi Shimon said the friends are familiar and are occupied with the works of creation but few know the works of creation as alluding to the great crocodile we learn that the whole world evolves and comes from the fin of the great crocodile therefore we must understand how he is alluded to throughout the works of creation. 50 come and behold it is written and the earth was without form and void we learned that it was earlier namely it was formless before the correction began and it has been explained when the great crocodile enters that
Above cross blue and struck that wind and placated it for it neutralized IT that is what is written and a wind from Elohim moved over the surface of the water Beersheet 12 so we learned that the Holy One blessed be he struck one wind with another and created the world 55 and Elohim said let there be light and there was light of it 3 because the supernal light illuminated and struck on the blowing wind and it was removed from over the deep and did not cover it as soon as the deep was lit up and the wind left it became light as is written and there was light 56 this light shone over the head of the great crocodile water flowed from its nostrils to sustain the other levels and wind blew up and he explains why the water flowed out and wind blew above saying that this is because beforehand this complete luminary illuminated until the light descended from Bida and sparkled to the 72 lights of the sun which is CER and since these lights were impressed in the sun below Wicked people in the world knew of them and worshipped the sun meaning they worshipped to draw the light from above downwards when the Holy One blessed be he observed that these wicked wanted to draw the light from above downwards he raised the light and concealed it why did he conceal it because of the actions of the wicked for this crocodile was ascending and descending and also drew the light from above downwards because of the actions of the wicked and struck these rivers until he had it. Light and it was no longer visible 57 and he sowed that seed through one righteous which is Yezid of Zeir and Pen who is the gardener of the garden the seed sown in the garden which is Malchut is the storing and concealing of this light meaning that concealment does not connote absence but rather the opposite it is the aspect of the seed planted for the upcoming blessing as the concealment itself will become light again like a plant that comes forth from a seed 58 when this great Crocodile saw that the seed of this light grew in the garden which is Malchut he awakened to provide for the second side the second river of the four rivers called Jishan and then the waters of the river Jishan were divided by one path of the crocodile for the reason that will be explained further ahead the crocodile goes to the seed that has sprouted and has become light in the garden which is Malchut and receives IT and illuminates upon the river with the light of the greatness of the seed which is called Jishan 59 and from that greatness of the seed King Solomon rose to greatness when he rose to kingship as written and bring him down to Jishan anoint him there I may lodge him 133 to 34 bring him there and not to a different place because King David knew that other waters rise to a different kingdom and this Malchut from Jishan is a stronger kingdom 60 this great crocodile became aroused toward it the river Jishan to sustain IT the fins of this crocodile which are his Malchut were elevated in that river Jishan and grew stronger in it and all the other rivers ascended and descended by means of the great crocodile after shining on the river Jishan he again entered that quiet river and became quiet in it 61 when that light was concealed above the gardener the original darkness from before the light emerged came out and hit the head of the crocodile on the hole that was made there a thread was spread between that illumination that remained from this light that was concealed and the dimness of this darkness as is written and Elohim divided the light from the darkness bear sheet 1462 this crocodile through the division the thread made again divided also in these rivers above the darkness the fish separated from each other according to their kinds by that division that was made in the river 63 when the holy supernal waters were divided all the rivers were divided and rose into the quiet river which is the clearest they go in and out of it three times daily 64 and all these fish which are grades and souls that grow in these rivers were separated one from another and are called knights because the grades of the left are called knight the ones were chief to all the others that emerged outside and the others inside ruled over everything these were called the firstborn of Egypt which have spread from here outside of the firstborn all these were sustained from the watering of these rivers and this great crocodile rules all of them 65 all this came about by the division of the upper water from the lower as is written and let it divide water from water bear sheet 16 the holy upper waters were marked and separated to be above and the lower waters were all separated from those to be below the holy ones were divided from the unholy therefore the upper angels are called separate because the ones were divided from the others according to their kind 66 and Elohim said let the earth bring forth grass herb Yielding seed bear sheet 111 the earth is the secret of Malchut and grasses are the light that sprouts from sowing of the treasured light this is the secret when the great crocodile would blow wind through the hole in his head that blew upwards he would dry all these grasses until another wind would blow against that wind of the crocodile and would quiet him below and the grasses grew as before and ruled and praised and offered thanks before the holy one blessed be he 67 from the left side and from within the quiet river emerge animals according to their species they attempt to approach these grasses but cannot they then return to their place all these rivers swim with that crocodile which dominates them and surround these grasses but cannot benefit from them except sometimes when the supernal wind does not blow and the crocodile exhales wind through that hole in his head that wind then rules over the grasses that is it dries them 68 he has another opportunity to Approach the grasses when the quiet river returns from Malchut to its place rising and falling since its waters are quiet it flows quietly the great crocodile rises to these rivers and is not there in the quiet river all the grasses grow around that quiet river growing on all sides and that crocodile goes up to the grasses and grows among them and afterwards returns to all these rivers 69 and Elohim said let there be luminaries in the firmament of heaven bear sheet 116 this refers to the piercing serpent had Bariak yis it called Bariak also bolt this is because it locks in both sides which are the two columns right and left and does not allow the third column that reconciles them to expand it does not go out to harm the world except once in a jubilee 70 in ancient books they said about the verse let there be luminaries that it refers to the piercing serpent that always goes crookedly and brought curses on the world because he enticed it with the trio of Knowledge when this one rose the strength of the great crocodile was broken so that he could not rise so much so that he lost his body because the holy one blessed be he folds him into the sea when he comes to him treading upon the strength of the sea the strength of the sea is the great crocodile as is written and he treads upon the waves of the sea of 9871 when the serpent rises it is written and he shall slay the crocodile that is in the sea Yeshua 271 which is the great crocodile therefore it is written behold I am against you the great crocodile that couches in the midst of his streams Yeshua 293 and the snake is luminaries had me or without Bob which denotes an expression of curse as is written the curse had me or out of Hashem is in the house of the wicked Mishlei 333 for he brings curses to everyone and he overpowers the crocodile with the power of the great river which is called Chikel. this has already been explained 72 that snake is on Dry land when they go to battle each other the one on dry land always triumphs because all his ways and his power are on dry land where Malchut is which contains all the judgments and he always eats dirt and dust as it is written and dust shall you eat all the days of your life. Bear sheet 314 the one grows in the dust and the other grows in water the snake that grows in the water is not as strong as the one that grows on dry land therefore it is written about the snake Mirat with a defective spelling without a bob because his power is strong enough to kill everything 73 and the snake comes across that crocodile which is in the water although he meets him he does not fight with him the holy one blessed be he alone kills him in the sea as we explained it because of the haughtiness in him it is written my river is my own and I have made it for myself. Yeshua 293 section 4 for Hashem will pass through on the lintel and on the two side posts rabbi. Shimon tells us why God required the sign of blood to be placed outside the entrance so that he would pass over Israel's houses when he killed the Egyptians. He says that idol worshipping is the only thing which is punished without a person having had to commit an action of some kind of blood placed on the three places of the lintel and side posts corresponds to the three columns. There is some discussion of the color of the columns and the color of blood and of the two bloods of Passover and circumcision that correspond to mercy and judgment at the same time that the Egyptians were being killed. Israel were being healed from their circumcision. We are told that the entrance in and Hashem will pass over on the entrance is the opening to draw the spirit and the body which opening is only freed upon circumcision. Rabbi Abba says that when pass through is written as in and Hashem will pass through to smite Egypt it always means that God passed down through the emanations of it. Sfirot to perform either judgment or mercy 74 for Hashem will pass through to smite Egypt Shemot 1223 we learned as Rabbi Yossi said that this passage is difficult could it be that first he sees the blood and then he will pass over it which means he made a sign if you say it is because of the commandment to place the blood then why was it placed outside the door and why on the lintel and two side
Them 77 we have learned the secret meaning of it it is written and take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch with it the lintel and two side posts Shemot 1222 he asks why a bunch of hyssops he answers in order to destroy the impure spirit from among them and to indicate on their houses at these three places the complete faith one on this side and one on that side on the two side posts that allude to the two columns right and left and one between them on the lintel that alludes to the central column therefore Hashem will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your houses to smite you with 23 for he sees the holy name marked on the entrance which is the secret of the three columns 78 Rabbi Yehuda said if they allude to the three columns why is this done with blood did we not learn that the colors of the three columns are white and red and the one that is between them combines both colors its color is Green like the sun that combines white and red and why are all three columns alluded to with the red color which is blood he said to him there were two kinds of blood one of the pascal sacrifice and one of circumcision as they circumcised themselves the blood of the circumcision is mercy even though it is red and the blood of the pascal sacrifice is judgment it therefore does not depend upon colors in this case 79 rabbi yehuda said it is not so but rather as i learned that the holy one blessed be he turned that blood into mercy as though it was the white among the colors this is the meaning of and when i passed by you and saw you weltering in your blood and i said to you in your blood live yeshiskel 166 even though it was red it was transformed into mercy for in your blood live it is not dependent upon colors in this case and one therefore marked the entrance on three sides one here one there and one between them for they allude to the three columns 80 rabbi Shizkiah learned that two types of blood appeared the blood of the Passover and the blood of circumcision which correspond to two crowns meaning Sfirot that appeared above at that time, which are the two columns Jesus and Gvira Rabbi Yossi said they correspond to one crown that combines the two concealed sides namely mercy and judgment 81 Rabbi Abba said the Holy One blessed be he had compassion for his children on many occasions a man made a house and the Holy One blessed be he said to him write my name and place it on your door so when you sit in your house I will sit outside by your door to guard you here at Passover he said mark on your entrance the secret of faith in me namely the three columns on the two side posts and on the lintel as mentioned sit in your house and I will guard you from outside as it is written and none of you shall go out at the door entrance of his house until the morning and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two side posts Hashem will pass over the door and will not allow the destroyer to come into your house to smite you Shemot 1222 to 23 so we see that the Holy One blessed be he guarded them from outside 82 Rabbi Abba also said they made the semblance of the Holy Name Hey at the time namely three lines, two on the side post and one on the lintel above, which resembles the form of the letter Hey which is Malchut therefore as the Holy Name changed at that time to be of judgment against the Egyptians so did the blood change at that moment into judgment as written and when he sees the blood on the lintel and on the two side posts for everybody's mark was red which alludes to judgment to show that even though it was mercy for Israel it changed to judgment to wreak revenge against the Egyptians 83 the secret of this matter is that they had to display below in the same manner it was above at the time if it was mercy then mercy of judgment then judgment since above there was judgment against Egypt it is written and dip it in the blood that is in the basin and touch with it the lintel Shemot 1222 for blood alludes to judgment about the future time to come it is written who is this that comes from Edom with crimson garments from Batsra Yeshayah 631 for he will show judgment to them all to wreak revenge his garments will then written with blood 84 and none of you shall go out at the door of his house until the morning he asks what is the reason that they were prohibited to go out of their house door he answers we learned that a person should not go in the marketplace and be in the marketplace at the time when judgment hovers over the city because once the destroyer has been granted permission whoever he meets comes to harm therefore since there was judgment for the Egyptians they must not go out 85 we learned as Rabbi Yossi said in the same place where there was judgment for the Egyptians there also was mercy for the children of Israel this is the meaning of end when I see the blood I will pass over you Shemot 1213 so have we learned that throughout the holy crowns above as there is judgment in them so is mercy simultaneously Rabbi Shizkiah taught that it is written and Hashem will smite Egypt he shall smite and heal Yeshayah 1922 meaning the smiting of Egypt and the healing of Israel he asks what is the healing for and answers they needed healing from their circumcision 86 we learned that the children of Israel were healed at the same moment the Egyptians were smitten Rabbi Yossi said we learned the verse Hashem will pass over the door why does it say over the door when it should have stated Hashem will pass over you he answers rather over the door refers to the actual door the opening of the body and what is the opening of the body say it is the circumcision meaning that he healed it 87 Rabbi Shimon said at midnight the male is awakened towards the holy crown which is Malchut who is that male he is supreme Jesus of Zeir and is known that one does not come about without the other even though the night is the aspect of Malchut alone it will never occur that Malchut shall be without Zeir and her husband therefore Malchut smites and Zeir and heals at the same time 88 and it is written Hashem will pass over the door namely the known door the door of the body is mentioned above what is the door why is it called door it is the opening to draw the spirit and the body because they were born from there come and behold until Abraham was circumcised he was shut off and closed from all sides and was not able to be get in holiness as soon as he was circumcised everything in him opened up and he was no longer blocked and closed as before 89 and this is the secret that we learned as he sat in the tent door Beersheet 181 because Yud was revealed he asks why does he say so he answers but Rabbi Yitzhak says by this revealing of the Yud he caused Jesus to dwell in righteousness. This is the entrance of the supernal holy tabernacle which is Malchut this is understood from the tent meaning the specific tent which is Malchut called tent 90 Rabbi Lazar said when this Yud was revealed Abraham was given the news and was blessed at the tent door which is righteousness namely Malchut that was sweetened with Jesus this is the meaning of in the heat of the day as daytime is the time when Jesus reigns which is the portion of Abraham since Abraham is a chariot too. Jesus of Zeir and how do we know that the tent door which is Malchut was mellowed with Jesus by the powers of Abraham it is because it is written and Hashem blessed Abraham in all things had Bekol Beersheet 241 Bekol is Malchut sweetened with Jesus by Abraham after Yud was revealed in him through circumcision 91 Rabbi Abba said as he sat in the tent door is similar to and Hashem blessed Abraham in all things had Bekol as the tent door is Malchut that is called Bekol it is the tent crown which is Malchut crown means a sphere in the heat of the day means as a sphere of Jesus that is called day was given to him so did he merit the tent door for Jesus opens Malchut called tent so it can illuminate as he sits in Jesus that is called day so does he sit in Malchut that is called the tent door because one does not rise without the other 92 another explanation for for Hashem will pass through to smite Egypt the meaning of pass through is that he went over the line of judgment of the crowns that were connected with other crowns above and disconnected them from their sustenance thus the Holy One blessed be he forwent his ways namely he disrupted the evolution of the crowns in order to perform judgment by Egypt and to guard Israel it is so wherever it is written he will pass through I will pass through he passed through it indicates that the Holy One blessed be he forwent his ways meaning the order of the evolution of the Sphirot. Either to perform judgment or for mercy here he will pass through means to perform judgment while and Hashem passed by before him Shema 346 is in order to have mercy section 5 and it came to pass that at midnight Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi paused during their traveling to pray because it is important to be punctual about the Minshah service as they continue on Rabbi Yossi is contemplating leadership and says that the world gains from good leaders and suffers from bad ones and yet if the bad leader is punished for his sin then the people are spared after it turns dark the rabbi sit under a tree in some fear until at midnight they see a doe crying and then they hear shouting a voice saying that their master is going into the garden of eden to rejoice with the righteous after this event rabbi Yossi returns to the story of the passover and wonders why the slaughter of the firstborn was not done in the daytime so everyone could see it and why all were killed rather than just those kings and ministers and warriors who cause war they wait until daylight and then go to rabbi
Faith the three covenants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. God saved Israel every holiday and festival and Sabbath is in memory of the deliverance from Egypt that is the foundation and source of the Torah and all the commandments and the faith of Israel. Rabbi Shimon says, Why was the judgment of Egypt not by day because the night opened not and did revenge being the secret of Malchut called night? Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi praise Rabbi Shimon as being the one who can open the gates of it. Secrets of wisdom. Lastly, Rabbi Shimon talks about watchfulness. The watch night and the watchman. These allude to male and female, and wherever male and female are together, all praise is directed to the male. Ninety-three. And it came to pass that at midnight, Hashem smote all the firstborn. Shemot one thousand two hundred and twenty-nine. Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi were traveling from the Shachalot, and Rabbi Shia was riding on a donkey. Rabbi Yussi said, "Let us rest here and pray for the time for Mincha. The afternoon service has come, and we have learned that one should always be punctual about the Mincha service. Why does he have to be punctual? Because it is the time when judgment is impending over the world, and one must concentrate his mind." Rabbi Shia got down from the donkey and prayed. Ninety-four. While they were still traveling, the sun was setting. Rabbi Shia said to Rabbi Yussi, "Why are you silent?" Rabbi Yussi said, "I was contemplating that the world exists only because of the leaders of the people. If the leaders of the people are." Righteous it is good for the world and good for the people if they are not righteous woe to the world woe to the people 95 Rabbi Shia said it is certainly so how do we know because it is written I saw all Israel scattered upon the mountains like sheep that have no shepherd and Hashem said these have no master let them return therefore every man to his house in peace to the Rahim and 1816 he asked it says Yashavu let them return when it should say Yashavu let them sit and similarly to his house should say in his house for the people were in their abode and where were they to return 96 he answers but this is what we learned if the leader of the people is not worthy in his deeds the people is caught in his sin whence do we know from the words and David spoke lo I have sinned and I have done perversely but these sheep would have they done to Shmuel 2417 so David sinned and Israel suffered if the chief of the people is caught in his sin then the people is spirit as judgment no longer dwells upon them as the passage says and Hashem said these have no master meaning there are no leaders for the people because a cab was slain therefore let them return therefore every man to his house in peace from the path and even though judgment has written on them in this path since their leader was slain and caught in his sin they will return in peace they are all saved if their leader is caught it was decreed that because he joined with the cab even Yehoshaphat would have been punished were it not for his crying as is written and Yehoshaphat cried out I may lash him 2232 97 while they were still traveling it became dark they said what shall we do if continue traveling it is already dark and if we stay in our place it is frightening they turned off from the road and sat under a tree they rested and discussed Torah there and did not sleep 98 at midnight they saw a doe passing before them shouting and crying out loud when they heard it Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi got up and trembled. They heard a voice announcing and saying, Those who are awake, rise, those who sleep, awake, worlds, prepare for your master, for your master is going out to Garden of Eden, which is his palace, namely Malchut, to delight with the righteous, as it is written, and in his temple everyone speaks of his glory. Tehillim 299.99 Rabbi Shia said, Now it is exactly midnight, and this voice that we heard is the voice that emerges and causes pain to the dough above. Which is Malchut, and below, as it is written, the voice of Hashem makes the hinds to Kabib. Fortunate are we to hear this one hundred come and behold the secret of the matter at the time that the Holy One, blessed be he, is revealed over the garden, the whole garden gathers, namely all the righteous in the garden, but does not separate from Eden, which is Chakma springs emerge from this Eden, namely the illumination of Chakma to many ways and paths for the conception of the righteous this garden. Is called the bundle of life where the righteous derive pleasure from the illumination of the world to come, and at that time the Holy One blessed be he reveals himself to them. One hundred and one Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yussi sat down. Rabbi Yussi said, Many a time I asked about the words, and it came to pass that at midnight Hashem smote all the firstborn in the land of Egypt. Why did this not happen by day so the miracle would be visible to all? And why did all these weaklings behind the millstones and the lambs of the sheep die? And why did not only kings, princes, and soldiers die as it was by the episode of Senchev of which it is written, the angel of Hashem went out and smote in the camp of Ashur to Melashim 1935. We learned that they were all kings, princes, ministers, and officers, and the might of a single messenger of the Holy One blessed be he was seen there even greater than this miracle that was done by his own hand. It seems that his miracle should have been even more great. One hundred and two, he said. To him you ask well and I have heard nothing about this so I have nothing to say but since we were worthy of all this and the way was set before us let us go to Rabbi Shimon Bar as I have heard he is cleansing the marketplaces of the city of Tiberias they stayed until daybreak when it became light they got up and went when they reached him they found him sitting with the book of homiletics in his hand 103 he opened the discussion saying all nations before him are as nothing and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity Yeshua 4017 he asks since it said all nations before him are as nothing why is it written also and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity and he answers I have learned the philosophies of all the nations of the world whose faith is as nothing they conceive neither the upper levels nor the lower they place for themselves a faith of foolishness and they are counted to him less than nothing and vanity like chap that turns in the wind and rolls during the summer in the fields empty for it has no contents at all this is the meaning of and all the inhabitants of the earth are reputed as nothing Daniel 432 104 he again opened the discussion saying in the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth Bear sheet 11 the first et is the right hand of the holy one blessed be he and that et is his left hand I learned that the holy one blessed be he stretched his right hand which is Jesus and created the heavens and stretched his left hand which is judgment and created the earth this is the meaning of my hand also has laid the foundation of the earth and my right hand has spanned the heavens when I call to them they stand up together Yeshua 4813 105 he asks what is the meaning of the verse they stand up together he answers if you think that these are heaven and earth that are zeir and, and is it is not so they do not stand together rather they are right and left separate which are the ET and the ET as mentioned above therefore the verse says they stand up together how do they stand together by means of this which is Malchut that rules at midnight for then ET which is Jesus is combined with this which is Malchut so they stand together 106 we learn that it is written he has made every head coal thing beautiful in its time Kahila 311 ET means Jesus of Zeir and as we said coal is as it said and Hashem blessed Abraham in all heb coal things Bershi 241 we learn that coal is the sphere that is called this namely Malchut that includes ET and ET as mentioned earlier and rules at midnight in two aspects mercy and judgment mercy for Israel and judgment for the heathen nations and the scripture says he has made ET coal so that they would be united together beautiful in its time namely at midnight 107 Rabbi Shia opened the discussion saying if it pleases my master I will say one thing why I came it is written and it came to pass that at midnight Hashem smote every firstborn in the land of Egypt from this thing that sir said it is understood that this passage is also explained in that matter as for us the way was propitious before us to come and ask before you 108 Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion saying who is like Hashem our Elohim who is enthroned on high Tehillim 1135 meaning who is like Hashem our Elohim who is Zeir and Benedicens and is crowned to settle in the holy upper crown which is by which illumination is above all the shining lights crowns and wreaths for all the mokin in the worlds are drawn from Bina and yet looks far down a bit descending in his fire from crown to crown meaning from the right column of Bina to his own right from diadem to diadem from the left column of Bina to his own left from illumination to illumination from the central column of Bina to his own central column from luminary to luminary from Malchut of Bina to his own Malchut to supervise over the upper beings in the heavens and the lower beings on earth. This is the meaning of Hashem looked down from heaven upon the children of man. Tehillim 142, 109. Come and behold, it is written, and it came to pass that at midnight it should have said approximately midnight or about midnight. Shemot 114, as Moses had said, and you
Weaklings who were behind the millstone die. This is all a supernal secret among the reapers of the field, meaning those who merited the plants of the hidden light that were sown in Malchut that is called field, and it is all correct according to the words of the faithful prophet. One hundred and eleven praiseworthy is the portion of Moses about whom it is written, You are fairer than the children of men. Grace is poured into your lips. Therefore Elohim has blessed you forever. Tehillim four hundred and fifty three. You love righteousness and hate wickedness. Therefore Elohim your Elohim has anointed you with the oil of gladness above your fellows. Ibadate you are fairer than the children of men. Means more than Seth and Enoch. Grace is poured into you lips more so than Noach and his sons of whom it says and Noach found favor. Bear sheet sixty eight. Therefore Elohim your Elohim has anointed you more than Abraham and Isaac with the oil of gladness more than Jacob above your fellows refers to the other prophets. Is it? Possible that a man who rose to the highest levels to which no other man rose did not know what he was saying 112 but this is what we learned the sphere that is called Zothis Fem, namely Malchut, is called woman as is written she had Zothfem shall be called woman bear she 223 and why is she called so because she was taken out of man but who is this man he is the one who is called Zathis and is a male man namely Zeir and Ben as is written for as for this Hebzeh. Mask Moses the man Shema 3223 so man is called Zay and Zay is called man and Zod is taken from Zay that is called male 113 therefore she namely Malchut is called a palm tree Hebtomber which denotes male and female because the palm tree does not grow one without the other male without female she is therefore called Tomber as is written like pillars had timbered of smoke Sher 36 the same way as smoke rises with both white and black so here too with Malchut that is. Called Zot, everything is included in her at midnight, so she will perform her deeds together at once. White for Israel, which is mercy, and black for the heathen nations, which is judgment. One hundred and fourteen before the night is divided in half at midnight. It does not perform its functions. Whence do we know this from Abraham, as is written, and he divided himself against them. Night bear sheet one thousand four hundred and fifteen, which means that it was divided in order to do its functions. Here too, Moses said about midnight, meaning when the night reaches the middle. For Moses knew that its functions would not be performed until it does one hundred and fifteen, and so it was that the night did not perform its functions until midnight. For it performed its functions in the second half of the night. This is the meaning of, and it came to pass that at midnight. What is the connotation of midnight? He means that during the second half, when Malchut rules, Malchut is always present to perform actions, and every action that was done at night was done in. The second half 116 and Hashem smote every firstborn and Hashem is defined as him Zeir and Ben and his court which is Malchut and Hashem refers to him and his actions smote every firstborn. He asked Moses only said and all the firstborn shall die Shemot 115 why does it say here smote he answers but Malchut of the aspect of judgment which is called KOH became aroused and Moses threatened him as is written behold till now let to KOH you would not hear therefore it is said. Hashem smote Hadhaka which is the name KOH that slew all the firstborn of Egypt 117 we learned that Pharaoh was wiser than all his sorcerers and observed that Zot namely Malchut would execute judgment upon him and destroy his land as Moses said and this Zot you shall know that I am Hashem Shemot 717 it is written about him and Pharaoh turned Dibit 23 turned meaning that he turned his heart away from this thought as written and Aaron turned Dibit bar 1210 and went to his house. Neither did set his heart even to this Hebzot, but the word also which is superfluous is to add that one which will destroy his land. Neither did set his heart even to this meaning. The word also implies that even though he knew that the name Zot which is Malchut would destroy his land, he did not pay attention to it. 118 it is written all the firstborn firstborn is the aspect Chakma and all the firstborn denotes that even upper and lower levels were broken in power, meaning all those levels that rule by the power of their wisdom which is the wisdom of Egypt as is written all the firstborn in the land of Egypt all the upper and lower levels that were broken in power are all alluded to in the verse from the firstborn of Pharaoh that sits on his throne even to the firstborn of the maidservant that is behind the mill and all the firstborn of cattle Shemot 115 so we see that they are all alluded to in the passage 119 in brief from the firstborn of Pharaoh. That sits on his throne refers to the power of the lowest sphere of the clipot which received from the upper Malchut even to the firstborn of the maidservant refers to the left sphere which is under the power mentioned earlier from behind four mills which are the four legions of the clipot this is understood because it is written behind the millstone and not from the millstone and all the firstborn of cattle refers to those below the lower ones mentioned earlier it is a female of it. Females of asses cattle and donkeys large and small animals which are the levels of impurity males and females come out from them to the firstborn of the captive that was in the dungeon means those that descend from the maidservant for with them sorcery is performed on the prisoners in order to enslave them forever and ensure they never go free 120 because they relied upon these levels the Egyptians refused to let the children of Israel go for they formed a knot of sorcery against. Israel so they would never be able to leave their bondage the strength and dominion of the Holy One blessed be he is seen in this and this memory will never cease from Israel for generations and generations if not for the strength and power of the Holy One blessed be he none the kings of the nations and all the sorcerers of the world would be able to deliver Israel from bondage for he opened their bonds and smashed all these crowns of the firstborn of the captive mentioned earlier in order to take them out to freedom referring to this it is written who would not fear you O king of the nations for to you it is fitting for among all the wise men of the nations and in all their kingdom there is none like you Yermeah 107 121 Rabbi Shimon what raised his voice and sighed he said there is an attachment formed have you thought how much the Holy One blessed be he attached himself and praised himself so many times for the exodus from Egypt it is written who brought you out of it Land of Egypt, Devarim 56, Hashem your Elohim brought you forth out of Egypt, Devarim 161, Hashem your Elohim brought you out from there, Devarim 515, I brought your hosts out, Shemot 1217, remember this day in which you came out from Egypt, Shemot 133, and brought you out, he himself being present with his mighty power out of Egypt, Devarim 437, Hashem brought you out from this place, Shemot 133, the exodus from Egypt is mentioned in the Torah 50 times 122, he answers, yet we learned that. There are ten crowns meaning Sfirot below in the clipot as above in holiness they are all blocked by the three clipot we mentioned namely the firstborn of Pharaoh the firstborn of the maidservant and the firstborn of cattle they formed three ties on these three levels with which they caused that Israel would never leave their bondage 123 fortunate are you Abraham Isaac and Jacob for the ties were untied for your sakes and the Holy One blessed be he remembered your three ties of faith this is the meaning of an Elohim remembered his covenant with Abraham with Isaac and with Jacob Shema 224 with Abraham is one tie of Abraham with Isaac is the second tie of Isaac and with Jacob is the third whole tie of Jacob 124 we learned that every holiday festival and Shabbat are all in memory of this the exodus out of Egypt they are all based on this and were it not for this there would be no observance of the holidays festivals and Shabbat therefore the memory of Egypt has not Cease from all holidays, festivals, and Shabbatokum, and behold, this judgment in the Exodus from Egypt is the foundation and source of the Torah and all the commandments and the complete faith of the children of Israel. Therefore, the Exodus out of Egypt is mentioned many times in the Torah 125. Also, regarding your question why the judgment of Egypt did not occur by day, we learned that it is written this day you came out, Shemot 134, and Hashem your Elohim brought you forth out of Egypt by night, Devarim 161. But we learned that the redemption of the children of Israel was mainly by night, which is the secret of Malchut called night for the night, opened the ties and wreaked revenge while the day brought them out with a high hand. This is the meaning of the children of Israel went out with a high hand in the sight of all Egypt, and Egypt was burying all their firstborn whom Hashem had smitten among them. Bar 333. This was in order to make the miracle famous 126 rabbi. Shia and Rabbi Yossi came and prostrated before him and kissed his hands they wept and said upper and lower images raised their heads through your merit the Holy One blessed be he made terrestrial Jerusalem which is Malchut
Mokin of Abba and Iama has to appear before him 127. He said to them, Even now I have still not finished answering your questions, for we learned and Hashem smote all the firstborn. All the firstborn is general IT does not say the firstborn of Egypt, because it refers also to the levels the Egyptians were attached to, which are the four levels of the Klippot of which we spoke before for everyone. It was the same as for those that died, meaning that whatever was done to the firstborn of Egypt. Who died was likewise done to the levels of Klippot of those who tied the ties and used these crowns in their witchcraft. Some employed the upper and some the lower, and even though they were all lower, they also employed the upper, and the whole land of Egypt was full of sorcery, as is written, for there was not a house where there was not one dead Shemot 1230, 128, and judgment was executed against them all when they were all gathered in their homes and were not scattered in the wilderness or in the field the night which is Malchut executed its judgments and we learned that the night shone just like the day is the solstice of Tumas and the whole people saw the judgments of the Holy One blessed be he this is the meaning of but the night shines like the day the darkness and the light are both alike Tehillim 13912 129 when Israel left they were all found dead in the marketplace before everyone's sight they wanted to bury them but could not find them because the dogs had eaten them however not all of them were eaten up some of them did remain of whom it is said and Egypt was burying Bimidbar 334 this was the most difficult thing for them as from one side they saw Israel leaving and from the other side they saw their dead it was all in order to publicize the miracle for there was nothing like it since the day the world was created 130 come and behold it is written it is a night of Hedlal watchfulness to Hashem for bringing them out these is Hashem's watch Night had for all the children of Israel. Shema 1242. This passage is difficult since it says Lyle. Why does it say watchfulness using the plural suffix instead of the singular? Moreover, it is also written Lyle. Why does it first say Lyle and afterwards Lyle 131? He answers, but this is what we learned. It is written if there is a virgin maiden, have Nair of Aram 2223. It is spelled Nair without A. What is the reason thereof? Because as long as she does not accept A. Male, she is called Nair after she receives a male. She is considered Nair. Also, Malchut is called Lyle before she receives a male, which is Zeir Enpen, even though it is written night of watchfulness in the plural, which suggests that it also includes Zeir Enpen. is because the male, which is Zeir Enpen, was going to unite with her but did not yet when the male united with her. It is written this is Hashem's watch night plural, which indicate male and female, namely Zeir Enpen. N. Malchut therefore it is spelled Lila with A 132 and wherever male and female are together the praise is directed only to the male the children of Israel also directed their praises to the male and not the female this is the meaning of this same ask Ismael and I shall glorify him Shema 152 when both male and female are present and the praise is directed only to the male and this is what the children of Israel await as written this says Hashem we have waited for him we will be glad and rejoice in his salvation Yeshua 259 for he will do so for them as is written as in the days of your coming out of the land of Egypt I will show him marvelous things Misha 715 133 such as the secret as is written here Lila and Lila so will the Holy One blessed be he do for them in the future as is written Watchman what is of the night have Lila Watchman what is of the night have Lila Yeshua 2111 as there was watching and Lila there so here is also watching and Lala as there was watching and Lila there so here also is watching and Lila 134 it is called Lila because of the male that is included in her as mentioned this is as written the morning comes and also the night of the twelve which are Zeir and Ben and Malchut because morning means as written and Abraham rose up early in the morning Bereshit 223 this is his own attribute namely Shisa of Zeir and Ben which is called morning it is written my voice shall you hear in the morning O. Hashem Tehillim 54 namely also the morning itself which is Zeir and Ben in the aspect of Shisa 135 Rabbi Shia and Rabbi Yossi were sitting Rabbi Shimon was teaching them the secret of the laws of priests they came back every day and sat before him one day Rabbi Shimon went out they went with him until they reached the field and sat down section six all things have I seen in the days of my vanity Rabbi Shimon says that the verse I have seen everything in the days. Of my vanity there is a righteous man who perishes in his righteousness and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his evil doing contains two themes Solomon was alluding to wisdom but God is patient with the wicked until they repent a person should live among the righteous because he will receive good due to their merit while if he lives among the wicked he will be caught in their sins Rabbi Shimon offers another explanation of the title verse that is that Solomon was called by seven names the seventh of which was Kahilat that is equivalent to them all his names were called after wisdom and therefore he composed three books Shir Kahilat and Mishlei corresponding to Chisa judgment and mercy thus he perfected wisdom Rabbi Shimon moves to the question of breath and voice saying that breath is made of air and water and everything in the world is made of breath breath has the power to produce voice but actual voice has the enduring power to produce speech he says that Sometimes vanity nurtures from judgment, sometimes from mercy. Then, while the rabbis are sitting in the field, they see a column of smoke from incense rising and falling. Meanwhile, a scent arose from the field that was more fragrant, for it was the fragrance of the Shechinah. 136. Rabbi Shimon opened the discussion, saying, Come and behold, it is written, All things have I seen in the days of my vanity. There is a just man who perishes in his righteousness, and there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness. Kahilat 715. What did Solomon, who possessed more wisdom than any other person, speak of in this verse? He responds, Solomon alluded to wisdom. We see that the ways of the Holy One, blessed be here, not so, for it is written, To give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doings. Yermeah 1710. But he is alluding to two things here. 137. We have learned that the eyes of the Holy One, blessed be he, wish to watch over the world and observe it as is. Written for the eyes of Hashem run to and fro throughout the whole earth to Debrahim and 169 if there are wicked people in the world the righteous man in that generation is snared in their sins the holy one blessed be he is long suffering with the wicked until they repent if they do not repent then there will be no one to plead mercy for them because the righteous has already died this is the meaning of there is a just man who perishes in his righteousness it is because he is righteous that he has departed from the world so he would not plead mercy for the generation 138 therefore we learn that a person should only live in a place where men of action live for what reason woe unto the person who dwells among the wicked for he is caught in their sins and if he dwells among the righteous he is dealt well with due to their merit 139 Rabbi Shasta lived at first among the people of Cappadocia and it was difficult for him and he was plagued with sickness he then moved his dwelling among the protectors of Tsipri, meaning among Torah scholars who are called protectors, he became great and merited much good, many riches and much Torah, and he said, I merited all this because I came among these people whom the Holy One blessed be, he takes care of to do good for them. 140. Another explanation of the verse, all things have I seen in the days of my vanity. Solomon had all the highest levels of wisdom more than all the people of the generation as it is written for. He was wiser than all men. I may lash him 511, and then Solomon sat on the throne of the Hashem as king. I debray him 2923. Could he say about his life in the days of my vanity and vanity of vanity? Said Kahilat Kahilat 12141. We learned that Solomon was called by seven names Solomon Yedidiagur bin Yekaitai Alemul Kahilat, and the name Kahilat is equal to them. All each of them is named in the likeness of above Kahilat. I also called a sacred congregation of ten men, therefore. It is said less than ten people is not considered a congregation had Kahal. A congregation could even be a hundred or more, but not less than ten Kahilat includes everyone all of Israel as is written. The congregation had Kahilat of Jacob Debarim 334, 142. We learned that his names were called after wisdom and therefore he composed three books, Shirhasharim Kahilat and Mishlei. The purpose of them all is to perfect wisdom. Shirhasharim corresponds to Chisad Kahilat corresponds to judgment. And Mishlei corresponds to mercy, namely they correspond to the three columns Chisad judgment mercy. This is in order to perfect wisdom. Everything that he did was for the purpose of displaying wisdom and in correspondence to the highest level he said about himself in the days of my vanity and vanity of vanities. Kahilat 12, 143. He answers, but v
The secret meaning of the words all is vanity in the days of my vanity I saw everything and there is a just person who perishes in his righteousness is the secret of that which he revealed and made known that everything depends on the days of my vanity this means that when hell nurtures from judgment in order to execute judgment before the reconciliation of the central column there is a just man who perishes in his righteousness because of that judgment when hell nurtures from mercy meaning after the reconciliation of the central column then there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness as because of mercy he is long suffering and both the wicked and the righteous are dependent upon this hell therefore it is written in the days and not in the day for they all depend on this hell whoever happens to be at the time of judgment is treated with judgment and whoever happens to be at the time of mercy is treated with mercy 146 it is written there is a just man who perishes in the present continuous tense he asks why does not it say perish for if it is dependent upon time it should have been said in the past rather than in the present tense he answers every time it is aroused judgment removes the righteous man from the world and from the generation it is always this way there is a wicked man who prolongs his life in his wickedness who actually prolongs his life in his sin for when that judgment nurtures from mercy it bestows mercy on that wicked man and forbears with him 147 while they were still sitting they saw a column of incense smoke rising up and going down he said this crowning the smoke is surrounded with mud of the earth from above it therefore goes up and down which alludes to the hell mentioned before in the meantime there arose a scent from the field which was more fragrant than all the spices he said let us sit here for the shechinat is by us as is written like the smell of a field which hasham has blessed Bereshi 2727 section 7 and he smelled the smell of his garments Rabbi Shimon says that when Jacob entered before his father the scent of the garden of Eden went in with him and that the clothes he wore belonged to Adam he asks what happened to the clothes of Eden and what clothing were Adam and he buried he answers himself by saying that when they left they threw off the supernal splendor with which God had clothed them we learn that as soon as God was clothed as in who covers himself with light as with a garment he created the world the question arises of how Isaac knew about the smell of a field that Hashem has blessed Rabbi Shimon explains that the field in and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening time was the field near the cave of the Machpelah and that Jacob saw the Shechinah on it and it raised supernal holy sense the conclusion Rabbi Shimon draws is that Isaac blessed Jacob because Isaac did not Attribute the scent to the clothes at all he attributed it to Jacob himself because he saw that he was worthy and deserving of his blessing. The rabbis then talk about the tenth day of the seventh month, Yom Kippur, and the sacrifice of the lamb. We are reminded that Israel does an action below and God does the action above. 148 he opened the discussion saying and he smelled the smell of his garments and blessed him and said see the smell of my son is like the smell of a field which Hashem has. Blessed Bereshi 2727 and he smelled the smell of his garments means that the garments emitted a pleasant scent that had never left them. Now we should examine this closely it is written the smell of his garments and the smell of my son. It does not say the smell of the garments but rather the smell of my son he answers but we learned that when Jacob entered the garden of Eden entered with him and we learned that those garments belong to Adam as written for the man also and for his. Why did Hashem Elohim make coats of skins and clothe them? Bereshi 321 and he took them out from the Garden of Eden 149 You may argue that it is written and they sewed fig leaves together a bit seven and from them were the skin garments that Hashem made for them if so then why is it written did Hashem Elohim make if they sewn them themselves and coats of skins when they were but a fig leaf but as the Aramaic translation of coats of skins it is precious garments and they emitted a sent from the spices of Eden 150 and we learned that they were made with the full name as is written did Hashem Elohim make which is the full name that even the heavens and earth were not made with for only Elohim is mentioned in relation to them he asks is it not written in the day that Hashem Elohim made the earth and the heavens Bereshi 24 he answers there is no difficulty here for when they were first made they were not made with the full name but when they became permanent they were maintained by the full name the verse in the day that Hashem Elohim made was said for the purpose of maintenance 151 and concerning what was said that these garments came to the wicked Esau who took them from Nimrod we explain this matter and it is difficult to understand if so why it is written for the man also and for his wife he made clothing for Adam and he made clothing for Eve but what happened to the clothes of Eve and if so and what were they buried could you possibly conceive that they left and threw from themselves the supernal splendor that the Holy One blessed be he gave them 150 to no one else wore the garments with which Adam and Eve clothed themselves because they were in likeness of above in these garments if you think that they wore them by themselves come and behold it is written and clothed them in that the Holy One blessed be he clothed them blessed is their portion 153 it is written O Hashem by Elohim you are very great you are clothed with glory and majesty Tehillim 1041 glory and majesty are before him Tehillim 966 and who covers himself with light as with a garment Tehillim 1042 as soon as he was clothed he accomplished his deed that is he created the world it teaches that the holy one blessed be he clothed himself in light and created the heaven the garments of Adam were similar to this clothing but how do we explain the verse the best clothes which were with her in the house Bereshi 2715 here the best clothes means kingly garments of silk and gold and it is the custom of the world to store them in spices and scents because of the preciousness of the garments 154 come and behold first he smelled the smell of his garments of 27 because he thought the scent came from them but when he felt it he said see the smell of my son because he knew that the scent came from him and for his sake and not from the garments like the smell of a field which Hashem has blessed he asked how did Isaac know? About the smell of a field which Hashem has blessed 155 he answers rather there are two things which amount to the same for it is written and Isaac went out to meditate in the field at the evening time Bereshi 2463 and that is the same one as a field that Hashem has blessed did not he have a house or another place to pray but that field was the one that Abraham purchased near the cave of Machpelah as is written the field which Abraham purchased of the sons of Shed Bereshi 2510 when Isaac came to the field he saw the Shechinah over it and it raised supernal holy sense therefore he prayed there and set it as a place for prayer 156 he asks why did Abraham not pray there in the field of the cave of Machpelah like Isaac he answers because he had a set prayer place before another reason was the scent that he saw at Mount Moriah why was it called Mount Moriah due to the good Merhem more that was there 157 and all was present by Jacob since in addition to his own sent the garden of Eden also entered with him therefore he blessed him he did not attribute it to the garments but rather to Jacob himself for he saw that the scent originated in him that he was worthy and that he merited to be blessed and that the garden of Eden entered with him for this reason when he saw stormed and protested he said moreover he shall be blessed Bereshi 2733 158 Rabbi Yitzhak said the Torah should have started with this month shall be to you the beginning of month Shema 122 what is the reason because it is the beginning of the rule of the moon therefore the Torah should have started with these words for the subject is connected with the Holy One blessed be he the moon is the secret of Malchud which when full unites with the Holy One blessed be he therefore the Torah should have started at the beginning of the fullness of the moon which is this month shall be to you the beginning of months 159 it does not pose a difficulty for it is not Written this Zotfem namely this month because the name of the moon is Zot and this is because say this mask and Zot are connected together wherever male and female are together the praise is directed only to the male therefore it says the same month instead of Zot and therefore it says it shall be the first month of the year to you but assuredly it is of the year to indicate that it refers to Malchut that is called the year only it places the praise on the male Rabbi Yehuda. Said wise to you said twice as written this month shall be to you it shall be the first to you Rabbi Yitzhak said from the doubling of to you we understand even more that it is only for Israel and not for the other nations as is written for Hashem's portion is his people Devarim 329 this connection with the month is to you and not to the other nations section 8 according to the house of their fathers 160 speak to all the congregation of Israel. Saying on the tenth day of this month they shall take to them every man a lamb Shema 123 he asks why on the tenth of the month Rabbi Abba said it is the time that the jubilee which is by shines on the moon which is Malchut as is written in regard to the jubilee on the tenth day of the seventh
Egyptians made them into deities 162 The Holy One blessed be he said perform an action below by drawing and taking sheep and I will break their power above as you prepare them by burning them by fire as it is written but roast with fire Shemot 129 I also above will pass him through fire through another diner the river of fire 163 He asks why was it drawn on the tenth day of the month and slaughtered on the fourteenth Rabbi Abba said through the lamb which is the Elohim of Egypt as mentioned before Israel were bound by slavery 400 years even though they were not enslaved 400 years they were designated to be bound to them for 400 years had not the Holy One blessed be he hastened the end it would have been as if they were enslaved all 400 years therefore they detained the lamb four days tied in the property of Israel and afterwards and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it towards evening Shemot 126 164 he asks why was it slaughtered at Twilight he answers that is when judgment is impending and the time when this decree of the exile in Egypt was given through Abraham as is written and when the sun was going down asleep fell upon Abraham and lo a horror of great darkness fell upon him. Bear sheet 1512 horror is one crown of the clip of darkness is another crown and great is greater than all the crowns even though we explain this passage as referring to other kinds of bondage of Israel, that horror refers to Babylon. Darkness is media great is Greece it refers to everything they allude to the three crowns of the clip and also the exiles in the same way we spoke of the Lamb of which the Holy One blessed be he said you prepare an action below and I will break their power above so I will utterly blot out Shemot 1714 you act below and I will act above 165 we learned that Israel did not leave Egypt until the dominion of all their ministers above was broken they left their domain came under the Authority of the holiness above of the Holy One, blessed be he, and were bound to him. This is the meaning of for to me the children of Israel are servants, they are my servants. Vay I cross 2555. What is the reason they are my servants for whom I brought forth out of the land of Egypt? But I took them out of another domain and brought them unto my authority. Section 9, 11 and 11. Though in this discussion we read that 11, 11, fermentation and 11. Bread are all the same thing in response to Rabbi Yehuda's query about why if it is so important Israel is only restricted from eating 11 seven days a year. Rabbi Shimon replies that this is an annual celebration of the days that they went out of bondage 166. This is what Rabbi Shimon said it is written, but on the first day you shall remove 11 out of your houses for whoever eats 11 bread. Shemot 1215. I have explained it thus 11 and 11 dough are one level and are all. The same the other dominion is the ministers appointed over the other nations whom we call evil inclination another dominion strange el other Elohim here also leaven leaven dough and leaven bread are all the same the holy one blessed be he said all these years you were under the authority of others and served another nation from now on you are a free man but on the first day you shall remove leaven out of your house you shall eat nothing leaven to be twenty and there shall no leaven bread. Be seen with you Shemot 137 167 Rabbi Yehuda said if so we should not eat leaven all the days of the year why only seven days as is written seven days shall there be no leaven found in your houses and not more he said to him at all times that a person is obliged to show himself free it is required not to eat leaven bread but whenever he is not obligated and he does not need to observe the prohibition of leaven bread 168 this is comparable to a king who appointed a person to be. A minister he rejoiced and wore clothes of glory all those days that he was being elevated to this level but afterwards he did not need it the following year he observed those days that he rose to this honor and wore those clothes and he did so each and every year similarly with Israel it is written seven days shall there be no leaven found for they are days of rejoicing the days that they rose to this honor and went out of another bondage every year they observed those days when they rose to this honor and went out of another authority and came under holy authority therefore it is written seven days shall you eat unleavened bread section 10 matzah of judgment rabbi shimon talks about the time that the moon was in a decreased state when Israel had not yet completed the covenant by the uncovering of the corona after they were uncovered god gave them bread from a higher place from the heavens and Israel observed those days when they entered under the Wings of the Shechinah and guarded the bread, the matzot that came from its side. The bonds which Rabbi Shimon refers to next are those that join the upper to the lower levels, and in the observance of the sacrifice, those bonds are strengthened as when the lamb is sacrificed. 169. Rabbi Shimon said, Matzat unleavened bread is spelled without Vav as visions had Maroti of Elohim Yashiskal 11 is without Vav, therefore it alludes to judgment. Why were they called Matzat for their being of judgment? Holy judgment, judgment that is attached to the holy name, judgment that was not strong throughout that time among Israel because the moon was flawed, and since the moon was flawed, it is written the bread of affliction. Devarim 163, 170. He asks, What is the reason that the moon which is Malchut was in a waning state? He answers, Because they were not uncovered and the holy sign was not revealed. Israel were circumcised but did not uncover the corona when they did it is written there he made. For them a statute and an ordinance and there he tested him Shemot 1525 and even though we have explained this passage as referring to something else it was all in context and it is well 171 if you wonder that it seems they had to be uncovered in the days of Yahashua this was not so only those about whom it is written but all the people that were born in the wilderness by the way as they came out of Egypt then they had not circumcised Yahashua 55 after they were uncovered the Holy One. Blessed be he said to them before you ate unleavened bread because the moon remained waned and it was called the bread of affliction but from now on bread will be from a different place as written behold I will rain bread from heaven for you Shemot 164 not from the moon which is Malchut as at that time before they were uncovered but actually from the heavens which is Zeir and as is written therefore Elohim give you of the dew of heaven Bereshit 2728 172 and holy Israel observe. The days when they came under the wings of the Shechinah and kept the bread that came from its side, namely the Metzot, as is written, and you shall observe the commandment of unleavened bread. Shemot 1217, what is the meaning of, and you shall observe the unleavened bread, it is similar to, and keep my covenant. Shemot 195, which is the covenant of circumcision, and it all rises and is attached to the same level as mentioned before. 173, one may wonder how it could be that Moses did not uncover them, but let them remain circumcised without being uncovered. He answers in order that Israel would not be delayed there until they became healed. He therefore did not uncover them. Pertaining to this, it is written, seven days shall you eat unleavened bread with it, the bread of affliction. Devarim 163, why was it the bread of affliction? Because for you came forth in haste of it, and similarly it is written, and could not delay. Shemot 1239, therefore they were not uncovered and circumcision. Without uncovering brings about the bread of affliction 174 come and behold when Israel came to the holy land they came circumcised and uncovered and it is written a land in which you shall eat bread without scarceness Devarim 89 and what is scarceness it is the bread of affliction and why is it called the bread of affliction this is because the moon which is Malchut is waning and is not blessed from the sun which is Zeir and, and does not shine from the sun as is written for all have coal that is in heaven and on earth I Debrahim 2911 meaning that coal all which is Yezid of Zeir and, and is attached to heaven which is Zeir and, and to the earth which is Malchut and receives from the heavens and gives to the earth what is the reason that it did not shine from the jubilee which is by this is because they did not uncover themselves as mentioned before but now that Israel were circumcised and uncovered upon arriving into the holy land it is written you shall not lack anything had coal in it. Devarim 89, namely is it of Zeir and that illuminates on Malchut and is called coal. What is the reason for in which you will not eat bread without scarceness? It is because you shall not lack coal in it the way they did in Egypt. 175 and every year the children of Israel make a memorial to Egypt and eat unleavened bread and have not interrupted this for generations and generations because they did not uncover themselves in Egypt. They lacked this coal. And the moon was waning and is called the bread of affliction. Affliction means poverty as in the Aramaic translation. The reason they ate the bread of affliction in the Holy Land even though they had already uncovered themselves serves as a remembrance to Egypt. This is a custom for generations and generations and for the future to come. It is written, Your sun shall no more set nor shall your moon withdraw itself. Yeshua 6020, meaning that the waning of the moon which is Malchut will be no. More 176 
Learn that there are three bonds the firstborn of cattle, the firstborn of the captive, and the firstborn of the maidservant. All the other levels of the cliff are connected to these three aspects above. They are all bound to the one called flock, and everything is included in it. It is the highest level among them. The flock below is connected to the flock above and is unable to separate from its bond. So we see that they are all connected to this to the flock. This is why it is written by it. And you shall keep it. Shemot 126, meaning bind it with a knot, and it would be given into your hands under your control until you slaughter it and execute judgment upon it in the time to come. It is written, Who is this that comes from Edom? Yeshaya 631, and for Hashem has a sacrifice in Batsra. Yeshaya 346, meaning that he will destroy all the other side from the earth, and then it is written, And Hashem shall be king over all the earth on that day. Hashem shall be one, and his name one Zechariah. 149 section 11 relating the praise of the exodus from Egypt we hear again about the commandment to remove the leaven from the bread and we are told that Israel must say the praises of the exodus from Egypt and when relating that account they will rejoice with the Shechinah in the world to come when God hears that praise is written you gathers round and rejoices and praises him and then his strength and power are increased above just as it is important for a person to relate the miracles of God it is important for him to relate his own sins this is because when a person enumerates every one of his sins beforehand he leaves no open issue for the accuser to exploit when standing before God to seek retribution if the person repents all will be well but if he does not the accuser will return and demand judgment lastly we hear again of the commandment to eat matzah on Passover because it is a remembrance for generations and generations of the secret of the faith R.A.I. Mahim the faithful shepherd 178 and the people took their dough before it was leavened. Shemot 1234 This 25th commandment is to remove the leaven for this commandment was given over to Israel and the people took up and carried their dough before it was leavened and shall there be no leaven found in your houses. Ibid 19 The friends have already explained it and we have explained the secret meaning of the difference between leavened and unleavened bread of the exodus from Egypt. In many places, that one is the evil inclination and the other is the good inclination. 179 The following 26th commandment is to relate the praise of the exodus from Egypt which is incumbent upon every person always to relate these praises. We have explained that every person who relates the exodus from Egypt and rejoices when relating that account is destined to rejoice with the Shechinah in the world to come which is joy from all sides for such is a person who rejoices in his master and the Holy One blessed be he rejoices in his story 180 at that time the Holy One blessed be he gathers his whole retinue and says to them go and listen to the account of my excellency that my children are relating rejoice in my redemption at that time they all gather and come and join with Israel to hear the story of the praise they rejoice with the joy of the deliverance by their master and come to thank and praise the Holy One blessed be he for all these miracles and mighty deeds and thank him for the holy nation that he has on earth that rejoices in the joy of the deliverance of their master 181 and his strength and power are increased above by their recounting the children of Israel give power to their master like a king whose strength and power are increased when his strength is praised and he is acknowledged all fear him and his glory rises above all of them therefore it is incumbent to praise and relate the story as we learn similarly it is the duty of every Person to relate before the Holy One blessed be he and publicize the miracle among all these miracles that he did 182 one may ask why it is obligatory to relate the miracles does not the Holy One blessed be he know everything everything that was and will be in the future and wherefore this publicity before him of what he did if he knows he replies but surely one has to make the miracle known and relate before him all that he did because these words ascend and all the company above gather and see them and give thanks before the Holy One blessed be he and his glory rises over them above and below 183 it is the same with he who relates and enumerates his sins of everything that he did if you ask why this is necessary it is because the accuser is constantly before the Holy One blessed be he in order to recount and seek retribution for the sins of people and to demand judgment against them however when the person enumerates each and every one of his sins beforehand he does not Leave any pretext to the accuser to exploit and the accuser cannot demand any judgment against him for he always demands judgment first and afterwards enumerates and accuses therefore the person should take his own initiative before the accuser and enumerate his own since 184 as soon as the accuser sees this he has no pretext to complain against him and then takes leave from him entirely if he repents well but if not the accuser rests on him and says so and so who came before you and confessed unashamedly he kicked his master his sins are such and such therefore it is advisable that a person be careful in all this so that he should be considered a faithful servant before the holy one blessed be he 185 the following 27th commandment is to eat matzah on Passover passover because it is a remembrance for generations and generations of the secret of the faith it has been explained that Israel went out at that time from the secret of other Elohim and came into the secret of Faith the secret has been explained in many places section 12 the Pascal sacrifice the ordinance of the Passover is to slaughter the sacrifice at twilight of the 14th day of Nisan as a remembrance of the Passover in Egypt the moon becomes complete on the 15th day and the sacrifice should be slaughtered at twilight of the 14th day because that is the time that judgment hangs over the world the main part of the commandment is to gain pleasure from the scent that spreads from the roasting over the fire only one who is circumcised can eat of it at the time when God came to Egypt and saw the blood marked on the entrances of the houses of Israel the people used hyssop to spread the blood since hyssop removes evil spirits and any aspect of a bad odor because it arouses the supernal redemption of Israel in the time to come God will slaughter the evil inclination because God slew all the firstborn of the Egyptians he obligated all the Firstborn of Israel to redeem themselves and he guarded them against everything scripture says about the sacrifice neither shall you break a bone of it because the bones were the deities of the other side and the children of Israel threw them out in contempt to express their contempt for the Egyptian deities 186 and Hashem said to Moses and Aaron this is the ordinance of the Passover Shemot 1243 this 28th commandment is to slaughter the Passover at twilight of the 14th day of Nisan a remembrance to the Passover in Egypt and this is incumbent upon everyone as it is written and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it towards evening of it 6 187 this Pascal sacrifice has to be kept since the 10th day of the month as is written on the 10th day of this month and they shall take Shemot 123 what is the reason it is because that is when the moon starts to shine from the 10th day and further until it becomes full on the 15th day should be slaughtered on the fourteenth day at the time that judgment is impending over the world namely at twilight 188 the meaning behind this is to remove the foreskin from before the holy covenant and to gain pleasure from the scent that spreads from the meat roasted on fire meaning the main part of the commandment is to enjoy its scent its purpose is only satiation and one does not need to eat anymore therefore no uncircumcised person shall eat of it at 48 but one who has the holy covenant may eat of it this is because he of the members of the covenant breaks the power of the other side and removes the foreskin from the covenant therefore it must be done by members of the covenant and not by uncircumcised ones 189 when the holy one blessed be he came to Egypt he saw how the blood of the Passover that was marked on the entrance and the blood of the circumcision were on the door as is written and take a bunch of hyssop and dip it in the blood that is in the Basin and touch with it. Shemot 1222. We have explained that hyssop removes evil spirits and any aspect of a bad odor when it is operated for the supernal redemption of Israel. 190. In the future to come, the Holy One, blessed be he, will come upon the evil inclination and slaughter it by this redemption from Egypt. It is written, and the whole assembly of the congregation of Israel shall kill it, for it is a token of remembrance for the time to come of the supernal redemption that is higher than the one from Egypt. 191. The lintel and the two side posts, they marked the letter yet on the doorposts, they marked the letter yet on the lintel to show through them the mark of the Holy Covenant, which is the YUD, and the foreskin was broken before the blood of the covenant that was marked on all, and blood came upon blood, namely the blood of the Pascal sacrifice on the blood of the circumcision. When the destroyer passed, he would see blood and distance himself from the houses. Written and will not allow the destroyer Shemot 1223 192 he asks if the Holy One blessed be he himself was killing why is it written and will not allow the destroyer which implies that the destroyer was doing it and not the Holy One blessed
The Passover with Matzot and Bitter Herbs Matzot is spelled without a Bob. He asks what is Matzot with regard to Bitter Herbs that the verse obligated to eat them together. He answers it is only to show the exile of the Sheshanah with Israel and their bitterness as written and they made their lives bitter with hard bondage. Shema 114 When the Pascal sacrifice is eaten it shows everything that was done to them in Egypt in that exile and that bondage therefore it is eaten with Matzot and Bitter. Herbs 195 What is the meaning of neither shall you break a bone of it? Shema 1246 To show contempt to it and all the deities of Egypt because the unbroken bones were thrown out to the marketplace and dogs would come and drag them from place to place. This was the most difficult thing for them because the bones put the body in order and resemble another side, namely their other deities. The children of Israel cast them out into the marketplace in contempt, therefore it is written neither. Shall you break a bone of it? You must not break them, but dogs came and broke them. 196 IT can also be explained. The Egyptians came afterwards and saw the dogs dragging these bones from place to place and breaking them. The Egyptians would bury them in the ground so that the dogs could not find them, which was the greatest obliteration of their idols on their side. The Holy One blessed be he was elevated in his glory by this, and all the other powers of the idols were subdued when they Subjugation of the idols is from their own side, it is even more profound, namely when they buried bones of their idols in the earth, therefore it is not Israel that voided them as written, neither shall you break a bone of it. Section 13 Sanctify to me all the firstborn. We are told that most people are under the domination of both the evil inclination and the good inclination. The average person should wish for two things to be redeemed from the domination of the evil inclination and to ascend to the level of Adam. Rabbi Shimon tells us how Gabriel the good inclination wrestles with man before he is born and teaches him seventy languages, and how the evil inclination causes him to forget the seventy languages. A man's merits and sins are always wrestling to wage war within him. Four angels descend with a man if he has ancestral merit, then they are Michael, Gabriel, Muriel, and Revile, and the good inclination stands above him if he has no merit, then they are. The four angels of destruction, sin destroyer, anger and fury, and the evil inclination stands above him to judge him in the world to come. This is why both Gabriel and Samael judge the average person. Every person has the four elements, fire, air, water and earth, but according to which of these elements is first a different angel comes first. Next we learn of the four aspects, lion, ox, eagle and atom of the right and left sides and we are told about the characteristics of those men who are under each aspect and how they differ depending on whether they do or do not study Torah. We read that the master scholars of the mission declared a person should always view himself as if the whole world depends on him because he can tip the balance. Rabbi Shimon closes by saying that every living creature is marked with the letters of the holy name in order to recognize who created it. 197 Sanctify to me all the firstborn whatever opens the womb. Shema 132 This commandment is to sanctify the firstborn. Of the animals a common person needs two things he should be redeemed from under the power of the evil inclination which is his master as Jacob said to Esau let my master I pray you pass over before his servant Beersheet 3314 meaning in this world he is the master because of the many sins upon the body as we explained the evil inclination judges the wicked and the good inclination judges the righteous the average man is judged by both an average man is a brother of the evil inclination and a brother of the good inclination as is written my brother keep what you have to yourself Ibid 998 and when the merits are numerous the wind breaks two of the watches of the night which are a braying donkey and barking dogs and rises to the third watch of the dawn wherein there is man that is a wife conversing with her husband man again becomes master over all the creatures this is the meaning of an I have oxen and asses flocks and men servants and women servants Beersheet 326 e. Ascends to the level of man of which it says and have dominion over the fish in the sea and over the birds of air. Bear sheet 128, as well as and the fear of you and the dread of you. Bear sheet 92, this is the second thing that a common person should strive for. 199, when there is an average amount of merits and there wrestled a man with him. Bear sheet 3225, meaning that the merits and sins wrestle in war from the side of the merits. It is written and when he saw that he did not prevail. Against him, Ibid 26, from the side of the sins. It is written, he touched the hollow of his thigh and the sinew of the thigh. Had nash, nash is derived from for Elohim has made me forget. Had nash and eat all my toil. Bear sheet 4151, it is a term of forgetfulness which is one compartment of the seven lands. Whoever descends there forgets his knowledge 200 before a person comes to this world and emerges from his mother's womb and there wrestled a man with him. That is Gabriel and there. Wrestled have B-A-Y-A-B-E-K means in the dust have Abak of earth as is written and Hashem Elohim formed have man of the dust of the ground. Bereshit 27 So we find that man is earth and the dust of that earth is the evil inclination and Gabriel is the good inclination who battles with the evil inclination called dust. He teaches him 70 languages therefore Vayitzer is spelled with two Y-U-D-S one Y-U-D corresponds to the good inclination which is Gabriel who taught him 70 languages. And one Y-U-D corresponds to the evil inclination who wrestled with him as written because he touched the hollow of Jacob's thigh in the sinew of the vein. Bereshit 3233 and he caused him to forget the 70 languages which the good inclination taught him 201 before all this four angels descended with him as is written for he shall give his angels charge over you. Tehillim 9111 if he has ancestral merit then one is Michael by the merit of Abraham the second is Gabriel by the merit of Isaac the third who descends with him is Nuriel by the merit of Jacob and the fourth is reviled by the merit of Adam and the good inclination is above him 202 if he has no merit then four angels of destruction accompany him sin destroyer anger and fury and the evil inclination is over them to judge him in the world to come therefore they explain that a wicked person is judged by the evil inclination a righteous person is judged by the good inclination and an average man is judged by both therefore if he is an average person both Gabriel who is the good inclination and Samael the evil inclination judge him 203 for every person who has in him the four elements fire air water earth four angels descend with him to his right and four to his left the four on the right are Michael Gabriel reviled and Nuriel while the four on the left are sin destroyer anger and fury and on the side of the body Metatron descends upon him on the right and Samael on the left 204 there is no person that does not have the four elements, fire, air, water, earth, but the four elements line after the preceding element if his sign is lion which is Jesus Michael comes first followed by Gabriel Nuriel and Revile if his sign is ox which is Bira Gabriel precedes followed by Michael Nuriel and Revile if his sign is eagle which is Tiferet Nuriel precedes and Michael Gabriel and finally Raphael if his sign is man which is Malchut Raphael precedes followed by Michael Gabriel and Nuriel. 205 All four aspects, lion, ox, eagle, man, of those on the right side which is the aspect of Michael are of mercy such men perform charitable deeds and have a pale face such a man is charitable pious and wise if he is occupied with Torah if he does not occupy himself with Torah he is the opposite coming from the side of the evil inclination he is a thief a fool and has no kindness because an unlearned person cannot be pious 206 from the side of Gabriel which is left his four faces, ox. Lion eagle man, our judgment namely the quality of judgment against the wicked and he provokes them as we have explained that it is permitted to provoke the wicked in this world he prevails against his inclination and fear since he will be a magistrate if he is occupied in Torah and excels in his study conversely if he is from the side of the evil inclination he provokes the righteous to punish them heavily and he will exceed in committing transgressions he does not fear sin his faces. Reddish and he spills blood like he saw 207 one who signed his eagle which is of the central column is neither excessively compassionate nor has an excess of the quality of judgment but is rather intermediate in his good inclination and in his good traits and intermediate in his evil inclination and in bad traits his face is both pale and reddish 208 one who signed his man which is malchute incorporates from the good side every good trait he is pious wise mighty in the Torah fear sinful. With many good qualities and his face will be blackish if he is of the side of the evil inclination he will be full of all kinds of bad traits 209 if the sins of a person are in the majority then all the legions of the evil inclination have power over him until all the legions of the good inclination leave him he causes Samael and all his legions to reign over his limbs 210 
For if he grows wise with Torah yet will be added to him which is holy namely Chakma with which one should make holy the firstborn of cattle namely Israel is holy to Hashem Yermeah 23 he needs this to tithe newborns for each baby is from the side of the son of Yahweh who is Bob namely Tiferet 213 all animals which are the holy living creatures are named after the letters of the holy name this is the meaning of everyone that is called by my name for I have created him for my glory. Yeshayah 437 even all the creatures were created with the letters of the holy name and there is no creature that is not marked with this name in order to recognize who created it this yet of the name Yud Hey Bob hey is the shape of the head of every creature hey, hey of the name are the shapes of the five fingers of the right hand and five of the left hand Bob is the shape of the body section 14 for you saw no matter of form the discussion here turns around it. Verse to whom then will you compare me that I should be equal says the Holy One we learn that when the illumination of Malchut descends and spreads to people then God appears to every individual according to their vision and imagination it is prohibited to make him out as a form or image at all after he created the chariot of supernal Adam he is called by the tense Firat so that men could grasp his essence by way of his attributes however one must not compare him even to one of his own aspects when his domination rises above those aspects there is no way of comprehending his image this is like the sea where the waters have no shape or form but only gain their form by way of the vessel which is the earth Rabbi Shimon tells us about the vessel Bina that is divided into seven streams there is a source a spring a sea and seven streams which equal ten if the vessels were broken however the water would return to its source and the broken vessels would remain dry God called himself. Endless because there is no end to the welling forth of the light from Keter the source of his tense rod, and there is no vessel by which one can give him any form so he cannot be known we also learn of the vessels he made called wisdom and understanding Rabbi Shimon explains that wisdom only exists when a wise man fills it with his own welling forth and the same is true for understanding he describes how God called himself by the qualities of his rod while he can increase or decrease. All the vessels there is no one over him who can increase or decrease him we read of the servants the throne and the angels that he created and are told that the faith of the Egyptians in their God was broken when they saw that he was merely a horse under the chariot of God again the importance of repentance is emphasized by Rabbi Shimon 214 this is the reason it says to whom then will you liken me that I should be his equal says the Holy One Yeshayah 4025 there is no creature that is equal to me and even though I created it in the form of my letters I can erase this form and form it again many times there is no other deity that can erase my form therefore it says for their rocks is not as our rock even our enemies being judges Devarim 3231 215 one may ask is it not written for you saw no matter of form Devarim 415 how can we attribute to him letters and names he will answer that this image that I saw is analogous to the meaning of and the similitude of Hashem does he behold Emidbar 128 which refers to the sphere of Malchut and to no other image that he created and formed with letters therefore he said to whom then will you like me that I should be as equal says the Holy One and to whom then will you like an L or what likeness will you compare to him Yeshayah 4018 216 even this image which is in Malchut does not belong in the place of Malchut but rather only when the light of Malchut descends and spreads to the creatures to rule over them then it appears to them to every individual according to their vision and imagination meaning only in the recipients themselves but not the essence of Malchut and this is and used similes by the means of the prophets Hashia 1211 217 therefore the Holy One blessed be he says to them even though I am like you in your forms meaning in vision and likeness still in all to whom then will you liken me that I should be as equal before the Holy One blessed be he created an image in the world and before he formed a form the Holy One blessed be he was alone in the world without a form or likeness for one who conceives him before the great of Briah which is Bina when he is without any form must not make any form or image in the world neither with the letter he nor with the letter yet or even to call him by the holy name or any letter of dot this is why the Torah says for you saw no matter of form meaning you did not see anything with a form or likeness 218 after he made that image of the chariot of supernal man he descended and was attired there in him he is named by the form of the four letters yet hey namely the tense Firat, Keter Shachma Bina Tiferet and Malchut so people could grasp him by way of his attributes which are the Firat in each and every attribute he was called El Elohim Shadex Otah in order that they could recognize him in each and every attribute and how he rules the world with Jesus and judgment according to the Actions of the people if his light had not spread over all the creatures how would they recognize him and how would this be fulfilled the whole earth is full of his glory Yeshua 63 219 woe to anyone who compares him to any attribute even to one of his own attributes and certainly not to humans whose foundation is in the dust Yo 419 who are perishable and worthless but the likening that we employ is only according to his power over that aspect or even according to his domination. Over all the creatures there is no likening above that attribute and when his power goes up from that attribute there is no attribute likeness or form to him 220 this is like the sea for the water of the sea that flow from it has no conceivable shape or form but by the expansion of the sea water over the vessel which is the earth it gains a form and we can then calculate namely the source of the sea is one a spring emerges from it according to its expansion in a round vessel which is a Yet so we have two forms the source is one and the spring that emerges from it is second the source is the secret of Keter and the spring is the secret of Chakma 221 afterwards he made a large vessel similar to a large excavation which was filled with the water that flowed from the spring this vessel is called sea it is the third vessel namely Bina and that large vessel divides into seven streams the water spread from the sea to the seven streams as into long receptacles and so there is a source a spring a sea and seven streams which amount to ten if the craftsman will break these vessels that he has fashioned the water will return to the source and the broken vessels will remain dry without water 222 so the cause of causes made tense Firat and called Keter the source and there is no end to the welling of its light therefore he called himself endlessness and he has no likeness or image there is no vessel there able to conceive him or have any knowledge of him at all. Therefore it has been said of him do not seek that which is inconceivable to you nor search that which is hidden from you 223 afterwards he made a small vessel that is the yet it was filled from the source and he called it a spring welling wisdom he called himself in it wise and the vessel he called Chakma wisdom and he made a large vessel and called it see he called it by the understanding and he called himself an understanding 1 224 he is wise of himself and understands of himself because Chakma is not called Chakma of its own accord but rather because of the wise one who filled it with his own welling Bina is not called so of its own accord but rather because of the understanding one who filled it from his own and if he had removed himself and risen from it it would have remained dry this is the meaning of the waters fail from the sea and the river is parched and dries up Yo 1411 225 afterwards and he shall smite it in seven streams Yeshea. 1115 he made seven precious vessels and called them greatness namely Chesed, Bira, Tiferet, Netzach, Hadyazid, and Malchut he called himself great in greatness and also pious had Chesed, Mighty, and Bira, Might, Glorious, in Tiferet, Glory, and Victorious, in Battles, in Netzach, Netzach, in Victory, in Hod, Majesty he called himself the Majesty of our Creator and in Yezid he called himself Righteous Foundation Yezid supports everything all the vessels and all the worlds and in Malchut Kingdom. He called himself king to him is the greatness and the power and the glory and the victory and the majesty for all that is in heaven namely is it and to him is the kingdom of Abraham 2911 that is Malchut 226 everything is in his authority whether to lessen the vessels or to increase or decrease their gushing as is his desire with them he does not have over him a deity to increase or decrease in him therefore this refers to the vessels of the world of Atzala 227 and he created servants to these vessels of Atzala the throne with four pillars and six steps for the throne altogether they are ten altogether is called throne which is the world of Briah like the cup of blessing to which they ascribe ten things because of the Torah that was given in ten commandments and because of the world which was the work of creation that was created with ten sayings 228 he then arranged groups to serve the throne who are angels seraphim living creatures Ophanim. Shashmalim Elim Elohim sons of Elohim Ishim he made servants for these Samael and all his groups that are like clouds to ride on in order to descend to the earth and they are like horses
Become like wax it is melted in the midst of my bowels. Tehillim 2215-230 And every firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a lamb. Shemot 1313 This commandment is to redeem the firstling of an ass or to break the neck of the firstling of an ass. If it is not redeemed this is the meaning of and if you will not redeem it then you shall break its neck. But the secret behind this is that the evil inclination can repent and afterwards become the good inclination as was established in the verse I will make him a help to match him. Bereshit 218 If one merits it is a help. If one does not merit then it is a match against him. These images of a lamb and of an ass, as is said about them and every firstling of an ass you shall redeem with a lamb. Mean even though he is an ass meaning an ignoramus if he has merit to repent he will be redeemed from exile by a lamb because he is Israel is a scattered sheep. Here may all 5017 if he does not repent then break its neck for he has made himself like a stiff neck people who will be blotted out from the book of life about them it is said whoever has sinned against me him will I blot out of my book Shema 3233 section 15 the Tefillin Rabbi Shimon expounds upon the importance and the secret of the hand Tefillin and the head Tefillin the Tefillin or prayer draws holiness from above as all the rivers run into the sea we are told that the four portions of the head Tefillin are Shachma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut in the secret of the supernal light that emerges from nothing the Skeeter and Rabbi Shimon describes in detail the first portion sanctify the second portion Bina the third portion Shema and the fourth portion the secret of severe justice the hand Tefillin are similar but are all in one compartment Rabbi Shimon reminds us that a person must put on the Tefillin every day in order to be in the high image of the above and book closes with the assertion that one day all people will know and fear God 231 and it shall be for a token upon your hand and for frontlets between your eyes. Shema 1316 This commandment is considered in a different category since it is not considered a commandment but rather a matter of holiness and these are the tefillin, the hand tefillin and the head tefillin for they are a manifestation of glorification and beauty of supernal visions therefore they are called frontlets as is written Yisrael in whom I will be glorified. Yeshua 493 232 it is. Written when Yisrael was a child then I loved him. Hashia 111 it refers to young Yisrael meaning Z-E-I-R and with Mokin of smallness and hero Yisrael have S-H-M-A Yisrael refers to Yisrael Saba old which is Bina with Mokin of greatness which is beautiful in appearance above in Bina and below in Malchut he explains how all the Mokin of Yisrael Saba and Tibuna come down saying Joseph who is Yisrael of Z-E-I-R and rises up to Bina and is adorned there with two colors white and red which are in the two columns of Bina by his reconciling the two columns of Bina in accordance with the meaning of three emerge from one one exists in three before he ascended to Bina he is called the lad and in the end after he was crowned with the Mokin of Bina he is called righteous how beautiful are the sights seen in him this is the secret of and Joseph was good looking and well favored Bershi 396 he was fair on both sides which are right and left on two levels which are Chuck man. Chassidim in two appearances which are white and red above in Bina and below in male and female for after he mediates in Bina he descends and mediates between male and female 233 it is written and you shall do that which is right and good Devarim 618 the right refers to the hand tefillin which is Malchut to improve her meaning to bestow on her by the head tefillin which is Z-E-I-R and so that they shall become one the hand tefillin is done before the head tefillin and there must be no separation at all between them 234 one who is crowned with tefillin is in the same category as the above and apprehends the two meanings we mentioned in relation to Joseph who is called the lat and also called righteous meaning in the secret of faithful servant and the secret of only son these are the hand tefillin which is the secret of the lat and faithful servant and the head tefillin which is the secret of the righteous and only son they are both actually one principle as mentioned. 235 The four passages that are in the Tefillin are in four compartments in the head Tefillin as there are four compartments in the head Tefillin so are they all in one compartment in the hand Tefillin this is because the hand Tefillin which is Malchut has nothing of its own but what it receives from above from Zeir and since it receives them at once it has only one compartment but Zeir and receives them one after the other therefore they are in four compartments this is the secret meaning of all the rivers run into the sea Kahilat 17 for the rivers which are flowing from Zeir and flow to Malchut which is called sea because it receives them from above from Bina it is called Tefillin and is sanctified with their holiness it is called holiness because the Mokin of Bina are called holiness and it is called Tefillin and then Malchut is called the complete kingdom of heaven 236 we have already explained the meaning of the four passages in many places but the first Passage sanctified to me all the firstborn had Kadash Shemot 132 which is Chakma is a supernal secret that incorporates all four compartments which are Chakma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut in the secret of the supernal light which is Chakma that emerges from nothingness which is Keter called nothingness each of the four passages Chakma Bina Tiferet and Malchut includes them all and each has Chakma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut 237 all these four Chakma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut are alluded to in here in the first passage sanctify because sanctify is the supernal holiness which is the secret of supernal Chakma that is called holiness from there everything was sanctified by means of the supernal concealment that is called sanctify to me is Bina which is the secret of the upper world the internal chamber all is uniformly the secret of Chesed either above or below namely Tiferet of the aspect of Chesed firstborn is the firstborn son is is. Written Yisrael is my son, my firstborn Shema 422, namely Tiferet, and this firstborn son includes all aspects and all colors, that is, it includes Malchut in it as well, because of this the verse includes all four, Chakma and Bina Tiferet and Malchut, within the secret of supernal Chakma, which is the first passage, this is a general description to know that everything is included in it, but in details each one in itself corresponds to an individual sphere, and the first passage includes it. Other passages 238, the second passage, and it shall be when Hashem shall bring you, Hebiha Yaki Yabisha Shema 1311 is Bina, the Exodus from Egypt is contained in this passage, which came about from the side of Jubilee, which is Bina, therefore it begins with, and it shall be because this term pertains to Jubilee, therefore its name is, and it shall be because the form of, and it shall be Hebiha Yah in the future tense pertains only here in Bina, and whose meaning I ask that it will. Flow down to shine on the luminaries which are male and female and exist in the lower level which is Malchut all pertaining to the same secret since it illuminates in a secret way it is not called openly by this name Vihaya but is rather given over to wise to know therefore Bina is marked with the holy name in the word Vihaya Vahayu 239 The third passage which I ask here have SH Madhavaram 64 is the secret of the right that is called supernal Chesed meaning Dad for Dad unites. All the four sides the secret of three columns and Malchut that receives them the holy one blessed be he arranges the order of the whole world through it for the whole world exists through IT this is what spreads in every direction and even into the lower depths namely by means of Dad that spreads to the lower beings the holy one blessed be he created the world with it when he wrapped himself in a cloak of light and this is what affects the unison since it is the central column that unites. The two columns right and left which are Chakma and Bina therefore Shema is adjacent to Vihaya because Vihaya is Bina and Shema is Dead that mediates between Chakma and Bina 240 the daily profession of unity is a meditation for the sake of knowledge and for paying attention we have explained this meditation in many places the daily meditation is the profession of unity in the verse Yero Yisrael Shema Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one and they are all one therefore he is called one he asks there are three names here so how are they one we proclaim one namely Yero Yisrael Hashem our Elohim Hashem is one yet how can they be one 241 this is made known through the vision of the Holy Spirit they become part of the mystery of the mirror of the closed eye to make known that the three columns alluded to in Hashem our Elohim Hashem are one and this is the secret of the audible sound sound is one and has three aspects fire air and water which are all one in the secret of the sound also here Hashem are Elohim Hashem are one they are three aspects but are one 242 and this is a sound that a person emits as means of a professing the unity tending to uniting all the levels from the endless world to the end of everything by means of the unification affected by the s
244, the fourth passage is the secret of severe judgment, namely Malchut of which it is written, Take heed to yourselves, Devarim 1116, which is an expression of judgment. These are the four passages of the head tefillin, which are in four compartments. The head tefillin are also similar to these four passages, but they are in one compartment. We have already commented that they all pertain to the same secret. 245, the knot of the head tefillin is in the shape of a letter dollar, and of this it is written, And you shall see my back. Shema 3323, therefore the knot is in the back where everything is tied into one knot. 246, when Malchut dons the head tefillin to connect with Zeir and there is another knot, namely the knot of the head tefillin, which is in the shape of a letter Yud. This is the secret of the holy covenant, meaning is it with which Malchut connects the secret is explained in many places, and it is all the same secret. Happy are Israel who know the secret a person must don. Them every day to be in the celestial image of this it is written, and all people of the earth shall see that you are called by the name of Hashem, and they shall be afraid of you. Devarim 2810 and of Rai Mahin of the faithful shepherd.